This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. <laughs> what up what up what up hello 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 everybody welcome 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 to another episode of that one piece talk my name is larry lawrence sam and lionel and this is that one piece talk where we talk one piece Woo! let's go on today's episode we have a very special guest He's been doing YouTube for about 11 years now, and he's <laughs> known as one of the pioneers slash pillars of COD Zombies content creation. Mm. By some, he's considered one of the best players in COD. He's basically <laughs> gotten to level 100 on every map, but there was a time when he yeah. reached around he reached round 71 five times on a map called Garad Kravi. Mm, He's also one of the five people <laughs> in Z House. Please, everyone in the live chat, give Mr. T Lexify the loudest applause by spamming the Nakama fist in the live chat. Thank you, respect, bro, for being respect. here. Thank you, Love thank you. Yeah. Please tell the people everything I might have missed about you. Oh, bro, I am nowhere near the best, but you know what? If you get that perception from me, I will take that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <bro. laughs> but. Man, I'm I'm so excited to be on here. I just want to give a big shout out to you guys because personally, I've been watching your clips for a very, very long time. And so getting the invite on here was such a honor. So absolutely love that. Thank you guys again. This is, I'm excited, man. You got me on a good time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, as we were talking before, before the show, we were telling uh, Lex about one of our head mods, Nick, mm -hmm. in the Discord. We, he's also a mod on YouTube and stuff like that. He's a really big fan of Lex. And he has a lot of people who actually love the guy tremendously. You know, you've built a wonderful community. And Nick was the one person that told us to reach out and see if you would even be uh, interested in coming on because he knows that you recently caught up in One Piece. And you were talking to Sebastian earlier about how you caught up to the manga and you're watching the anime. So. Yes. Yeah, explain. Yeah. How's your how's your journey been, man, so, regarding oh, One Piece? Man. Okay, so I, bro, look at this. I got Luffy on the car keys, bro. <laughs> like, I, I, I love One Piece, man. But I, bro, it took me, I think, three years to watch the whole anime. It took Oof. three mm. whole years. Wait, I is started... that including filler? That is not including filler. Okay. Have, you you know seen funny? have you seen G8? Uh, wait, wait, wait what, which one is that again? G8? Or what, G8, what, what is when that? they fall from the sky and land in the oh. marine base? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, so right. this is the craziest thing. It took me three years to catch up to all of One Piece, and I've seen every single part of it except for filler and One Piece movies, and I've read up to the manga. So I, I have like a good, solid, strong grasp of it, but I wouldn't say that I'm like an expert or anything. I just feel like, I've been picking up a lot of these notes along the way with One Piece and seeing how potentially it could finish. Like, I love watching your guys' pod for that because you guys literally bring up some crazy things that I <laughs> legit would never think of, especially like with this most recent chapter, bro. I got theories, man. I got <laughs> theories. I got theories, bro. It's it's exciting, man. But yeah, I it took me three years to get into it. I started anime back in 2014, actually with Hunter. Uh, but the thing is, is that I love Togashi, but it just, I felt like because his work has not been updated for so long, I was just waiting and waiting and waiting. And I was like, man, I got to get into something else. And then I heard about Oda and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> the rest is history, you know, <laughs> like, wow. I, I just, I just love One Piece. Like to me, it's one of those shows that it's really, when you think about it, it's really just a biography of Luffy's life from wow. start to finish. Mm. That is literally the whole show. It's kind of like how Star Wars makes it a biography of Anakin Skywalker. This show is just Luffy's life from beginning to end. And I, I, I just love that. I, I, no other show really goes as in-depth as One Piece, in my opinion. 
And especially after a thousand episodes, I mean, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was gonna say, was it was yeah. it like very uh, daunting for you when you saw yeah, how so many? Initially, I started with Hunter, and Hunter was daunting even too because it's over 120 episodes. Like it's yeah. it's a lot. It's it's not it's not your gen generic like 24 episode anime. But honestly, bro, um, I finished Grand Line after the first 60 episodes, right? And I was like, wow, like this is just the the prologue like <laughs> this, is like, this is like not even the story dude. like yeah. and i love that I, I i've never seen another story do that and i've always loved entertainment pieces of media or games that have just convoluted stories like kingdom hearts or cod zombies or i mean even one piece as well and kingdom those hearts have always good. interested yeah. me i love kingdom hearts man yeah just such a good game great so like those intertwining stories man oh i love them like this image right here that i have behind me this is the timeline for the game that i play here i'm covering it up look <laughs> yeah, at that I was gonna say. <laughs> this one this right here it's literally just like a bunch of circles of just random text and it's just like <laughs> stuff like that i absolutely awesome. love that awesome. it's just so sick lex i but... have three questions for you yeah one who's your favorite one piece character two oh yeah yeah who would you love to play z uh, co uh zombies cod with of any one piece <laughs> character <laughs> and three moves to the slide again i think i have that hat i think i have that hat <laughs> Yes, dude, I got this at the uh, I got this at the One Piece store, I think in mm -hmm. LA. Or mm. it's not a One Piece store, it's an anime store. Uh, it's in uh, Japantown, I think. And it is just, mm. oh, I, I saw that, I was like, if I don't get this, I'm not a One Piece fan. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't my actual third question. The third question was, yeah. where was the manga when you caught up? Is it, oh, okay. that is extremely recently or was it like, some time ago and you've been caught you up for a little bit. You just spit firing questions. Can you let him answer no, the first question? Mean, Shut up. He got I'll it. Answer, I'll <laughs> answer that third question because it's so funny. So I got into One Piece when Whole Cake was in the manga. Ah. And Wano was so long that throughout the entirety of Wano, I went from start to finish. Mm -hmm. I, I literally figured out the rest of the storyline while Wano was airing. It took that long. And so, <laughs> yeah. Like, it's funny because I only started two arcs ago but it's we're on egghead now right and it's yeah. like I, I i'm i'm here i'm, I'm <laughs> caught up <laughs> you know um but you know what's interesting is that my least favorite straw hat for the longest time was actually zoro but then i got his earrings and i was like man i can't say that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how this is, is like me this is like favorite? me getting a fake nose and it's oh. a fake big nose and i'm like a usopp fan now in what world is zoro your least favorite straw hat how's that even possible i think it's because i've seen zoro in so many other stories he's like your generic strong protagonist that is like fully rooted and listen i know he's much more deeper than that and i i respect him but it's like I've always liked the quirkier characters in okay. One Piece, which is why my favorite straw hat is actually Brooke. I knew he was going to be I love <laughs> nobody. Yo, now we're friends. <laughs> now we're friends. Yo, I love Brooke too, bro. So you said quirky. Brooke's... I was going to be either Frankie or Brooke. Oh, man. Dude, Brooke's backstory is one of the best stories in all of One Piece. Chopper's backstory is one of the best stories in all of One Piece. Like, Drum Island is top five arcs for me. Legit. Like, I, wow. I love Chopper's story. I, that, you can't even say is a bad arc. The Will of D is introduced into that arc, man. You know what? We don't have Bruce's favorite We're just getting that solved. Why? Because he be rocking zombies, bro. That's why. <laughs> that's why. That's her. That's he's his partner. To, he's used to skeletons. Yeah, that's <laughs> his right he's there. used to yeah. undead people. You got a quirky yeah. skeleton. Oh, that's that's him. <laughs> yeah. No, bro. I I love Brooke. I think Brooke is like um he's going to be utilized more. I think in the future of the story because there's a lot of different things coming into the story right now that are uh, implying like an underworld type of aesthetic, especially. I mean, the last panel we just had with the Gorosei dropping in with these ritual circles of magic that were the exact same ones that Brooke got sent to by Kuma at the end of, like, when they all got separated on yeah. uh, Sabote. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. it was the same one. And so it's like, we are getting into this, like, underworld type of era. I've heard that, like, there's a character on the Blackbeard, uh, the Blackbeard Pirates 
that uh, basically Brooke, Brooke is going to be fighting against with his like soul abilities, Lafitte. like his soul king abilities. I'm so Lafitte, excited. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, probably it's the it's the one with the top hat and the cane you're talking about, right? Yes, and yes, yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Lafitte, yeah. He has yeah. like an angel fruit, right, or something. Like he has that? the he harp. Has wings. He oh, has harpy, a, harpy. There. He's a harpy. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, he's a harpy, and he does like hypnotism and stuff like that. Because that's how the door is opened up for NS Lobby yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, Impel Down. That's how Black Bear got in. No, that's interesting. So, so yeah. um, you, which one would you want to play uh, COD Zombies with then? Oh, uh, dude. Who would be the perfect straw hat? You know what's funny? I'm going to say Zoro because I like him the least. <laughs> so I would have a more competitive advantage against him. And I feel like he would he would get lost, bro. Oh, if Zoro would get lost, he, I would take the W easily, man. Oh, I said zombies, bro. Partners. Let's, this is your guy. You're supposed to rank up with them. Uh, the one that would be the best gamer okay. would be Usopp with, on your team. Usopp, he would be a gamer. You know what? I think you're right. Yeah. Usopp, mm, I would think, be the would gamer. probably be the best. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I, I feel like Frankie would break the control as soon as I. <laughs> Gave it to him in his hands. <laughs> He'd probably get to like round ten and be like, "Yo, you want tea? Like, <laughs> like, do you want something to drink? Like, or do you?" you know, he'd open up his stomach and there'd be three Coca Cola. Yeah, let yeah. me take out some juggernaut, bro. He got you. Yeah, yeah. literally. He got you. So machine, I know you rank things all the time. So if yes. you had, so you said Drum Island was a top five arc for you. So yes. what are your top five arcs? That's a great question. I don't have a solidified list, but I, I gotta say, if you don't have Egghead top five, you're crazy. I'm just gonna say that. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna say it because the amount of information that has been built up, I, I, I have a big issue with the One Piece community because a lot of people are upset with Gear 5 from what I'm seeing. They're like, Luffy's very cartoony. I'm like, dude, you've watched a guy literally go from zero to 100 over a thousand chapters and now you're upset that he's actually powerful. Like, what is, <laughs> like, what is the correlation with that? Like, it, it doesn't, it, you've seen this guy be an underdog for so long. And that's why I don't subscribe to that notion from the community that Gear 5 fights are goofy and they, they take away the emotion from the fight. Mm. Nah, man, this has all been led up perfectly, man. You've got to respect the way Oda's bringing in this character. And I don't think that Gear 5 is just going to have goofy fights like this, man. Yeah. You know? Um, but going back to the original question with top five arcs, Wano's up there for me for sure. The moments from Wano are the pinnacle of the series, especially mm. with the fights and the learning of hockey and all of that. I'm so... Wano's up there as well. Um, Drum Island for me is up there. Marine Ford is up there. I, I like a lot of the generic <laughs> okay. ones. So that's um, that's three... That, uh, yeah, I and what else do I really like? Uh, hmm. Honestly, I I really like the uh, the training two year period between all the characters. Okay. I know a lot of people don't like that, and a lot of people felt like a lot was taken out. But I I have a really big love for that, and I have to say also though I'm not a big New World fan. I think New World arcs are not as great as some of the older ones. I do really like Thriller Bark as well, okay. like those, mm -hmm. especially because I like Brooke. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of those type of arcs are just incredible. But um, I, I'm honestly really liking the newest stuff that's happening right now. Like I was saying earlier, like if you are becoming a One Piece fan right now, you are coming in at the most opportune moment of all time i think because so much is being revealed <clears throat> right now it's absolutely insane like the whole premise of the story could be revealed in like the next 10 chapters and i i would not even Yo, chill on that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't yeah. be surprised, bro. I'm definitely uh, not trying to see it just like, yet. He's right though, but I get it though. Because like with Charles, right? Our brother, our other brother, we got him into One Piece like this year, last year, over, right. over the past year, he's yeah. caught up, and he's like learning about Vegapunk and stuff. And I'm like, man, I had to wait like decade for this. I wouldn't even like, know what he looked yeah. like for so <laughs> long. He's <bro. laughs> yeah. just like, oh no, it's Vegapunk, awesome. I'm like, man. <laughs> <laughs> but that I was actually that was gonna be my next okay. question of Lex. So you said that, you know, seeing Gear Five the way you see it, that is was it because you watched it entirely? Like you had the opportunity to not wait week week after week after week. You just read it all and you watched it all in one shot, yeah, right? So I caught up to Wano 
pretty much at the end uh, or right before the siege started so i got to see the whole siege weekly in anime and mm -hmm. also read about it and like i read gear 5 and i was so excited mm -hmm. to see that in anime like oh my gosh and then when it happened i i i still think it's the best transformation we have ever seen ever i i, I think it is literally taken what akira has designed with mm -hmm. the super saiyan mm -hmm. and has elevated it perfectly on top of luffy's character it's not stolen it's truly luffy's power up because no other anime protagonist could ever undergo the same thing it, it doesn't work you know that's why i love gear five oda i think wrote it perfectly i get why people are upset because of the retconning people are saying of the the devil fruit type where mm -hmm. it goes from paramecia to zoan I don't think that's that big of a deal. I don't know. You you kind of see the hints throughout the story. Like when Luffy's in Impel Down and he's up against the Awakened Zoan forms, like he acts very similarly. You know, there there mm. are so many hints throughout it that something is up. And it's also like you see different Paramecia users throughout the story. And I'm like, that's not Luffy, man. That's, <laughs> not, that's not him. You know? There, there is a difference, man. I think people that were upset about it weren't picking up the clues. I, you know what's crazy? I literally just watched Alabasta not too long ago. And I kid you not, in the anime, there is a shot where Luffy is flying up. I can't remember with one of the guards' names. I think Pell. Pell. And, How could you and forget Pell? I for. Because he should have died. Man. Thank you. That's Thank why, you, Lex. Like, that's why. He should have died. But like, <laughs> Go ahead, Lex. What I remember, though, there's a scene where Pell is flying right in front of the sun. And it's like there are times where Oda is literally teasing that Luffy is the sun god. He is the sun. I just was watching Randy Troy, another One Piece YouTuber, basically describe how in this last chapter with Saturn getting folded around, luffy it's like saturn now rotates the sun like it's mm. in luffy's control you know there's a lot of little allegories that oda's making especially with planets now with the gorosei and it's like you gotta gotta pick up on these hits man oda's <laughs> leaving all these little trails man for people to pick up on lex uh yeah i, I love what you're saying i have one small pushback man what? and i know you, you said <laughs> you said off screen before to us yeah yeah that you haven't seen dragon ball there is yes. no transformation that will ever yes. top Super <laughs> Saiyan 1. I didn't know that. Yes. We'll Nothing. Get, we'll get into it. Nothing. We'll get into it. No, I, I, I think it's interesting because I've never been a part of it during when it was actively releasing, when the fan base was going all crazy. And so I, I hate being that type of guy to go back to someone's work after they've already passed away. Mm -hmm. But I do want to... Dragon Ball has been on my list for so long. I've just been so caught up with other animes like... I just watched another anime called Solo Leveling. I don't even know what that show is about. I watched all eight, <laughs> nine episodes. I'm still clueless. Like, what is going on? <laughs> I hear good things. Yeah, yeah apparently it's pretty good. Yeah. yeah, but. All right. Yeah, well, listen, man. It's great having you on the show. Uh, we're going to have a good show, though. We're going to read some super chats so everybody's, like, not hawking us down about it. Uh, of course, yeah. For everybody, if you want to, you know, talk to uh, Lex, uh, we're going to do phone calls later. Uh, it's part of the show, so if That's you wanted cool. to call up and talk to Lex for the first time or ask us questions, you're more than welcome to. Uh, and yeah, listen, I know what it's like to be on the other side of the screen and you guys want to just super chat and have your super chat read, but sometimes we're going to get caught up in combo. So I apologize in advance if we don't read it immediately. I really am sorry about that, but it will get read no matter what. Also, if you guys haven't liked the uh, stream just yet, please like the stream. If you haven't gone on uh, Spotify and Apple Podcasts, please give us five stars and a nice comment. And most of all, if you haven't subscribed already to Mr. T. Laxify over here, please subscribe to him. Just click the blue name within the video title. And also, if you wanted to follow any of his other uh, social media sites or even his Twitch where he does live streams such as he just played Helldivers uh, the yes. other day. Uh, so uh, all those links are in the video description below. Just click any one of them and follow him immediately. So please do that Appreciate right now. Appreciate the shout out. Please Appreciate do it right the shout now. Out. <laughs> but other than that, guys, we you want let's say hi to chat. And also I did want to read one person's uh, live chat that I saw. Okay. You want um, to just... Shout people out right now or for what? one second. Let me just read this one. So Matthew Farrell, uh, 
says he didn't super chat. Uh, he didn't need to, of course. He says, glad I could watch this live. Joining from my hospital bed. I was just diagnosed with cancer at 29. This week has been rough and I'm actively getting chemo as I watch. Thanks for being the best pod. Oh, man. Oh, man. Wow. Prayers up to Matt, man. Yeah. Hopefully... God bless you, brother. Yeah. Yes, God bless you. I hope, I hope everything goes well. God, It's all in God's hands, man, for you. I, I hope everything goes well. I've... I've had uh, I've had even a couple moderators of mine either get cancer or have died, and it 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 it, it hurts your soul. But you know what? It's it's what matters is the way you act, because we are given such different problems in our lives. But it's it's the way you respond, man. It's like I say, do you, I hate to tie this into one piece, but it's like something that has always kept me going and why I love the show so much is I think about Luffy's grit. And why I love uh, uh, an arc uh, like Drum Island is when Nami is sick, Luffy has no other option but to get her to a doctor, and what's in front of him is a wall. And I feel like this is your wall, and you got to climb it, man. It's going to be a hard journey, but I pray that you are guided and that everything goes well, and I, I, hope, I hope that you conquer, just like how Luffy did, man. Yes. He conquers the walls. You know? Yes, for sure. Thank you for yeah. that, Lex. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you yeah. to everybody on this pod, on this table. We we wish you overcome that wall too. Seriously, Absolutely, man. man. So thank you for even watching, and uh, just know everybody in the chat right now, everybody in the live chat, please span span W's for our our Nakama Matthew Farrell right now. Span W's nonstop for the boy. But other than that, yeah, W's I just on the to point boys. That out. Yeah, man. Uh, a lot of people in chat. Uh, I see Sedgefield. I see Diego Keys, DJ Stanley, Mamba Kid, Mr. Apologies, Ron Lewis, Mugiwara, yeah, Philly, Twilight Straw Hat, Needle, Needles 25, Tasty Cakes, Larry 302, Nick Quavo, Alex Vargas, Trev, Dutchman Stream, Heavy Duty Mayo, <laughs> Patty Melts, <laughs> Larry Lover, The Broker. What's up, Broker? Ayo, let's go. No one special. One three three. B verse. Uh, Geo Gabari. Uh, to so many. Uh, Lord Sneak. Subterranean Edward. Bob Jones. Goku. Two two four one. Uh, just so many. Uh, Sedgefield. Young Lou. Vandy Auger. Skylands. What up, Sky? Austin Hart. Grim underscore. Just so many on chat. Uh, Key. I finally said it right. Yes. Finally. Thank God you could read. Finally. <laughs> Thank God. Whatever. Whatever. But yeah. It's too many people to shout out. <laughs> too many people to shout out. All right. And then uh, let's let's hit some super chats, and oh. then we'll go into some more discussion with Lex. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Lex, some of these might be for you, so yeah, be ready. Yeah, they're definitely going to oh, be for you. Be ready. I'm, yeah. I'm buckling down, brother. I'm ready. <laughs> All right. We got a 22-month membership to Yonko status from our guy Twilight Straw Hat. 22 months. That's crazy. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so thank much. You. Yeah, thank you. That is our it. highest tier of membership, so thank you. And Twilight says, almost at that two-year point. But for real, thank you guys for the years of amazing content every week. Here's to many more. Much love. Hashtag Larry has W takes. Hashtag Sims for Seb. Hashtag the CGI crisp. Hashtag Marv D Goat. And hashtag RIP Toriyama. Uh, we'll <laughs> likely have a good discussion about that a little bit later. Yeah, we'll, have a, we'll talk about some Dragon Ball a little bit. Yeah. Another five from Needles25 says, Catching Alive, I work third shift. Woke up early just for this. What's your favorite Brook joke or moment? And I'll pass that to you, Lex. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, listen, okay. I get how people get upset about the New World Sanji and Brooke. Like, yeah, they can be, like, too much, especially, like, with women or whatever. But I always love the moments where Brooke just comes in and everybody's sad. And he just comes in and he's like, ooh-hoo! Like, <laughs> it's not even a particular moment. It's just his presence. You can feel when he's not there. Mm -hmm. Like, honestly, my favorite moment ever of Brooke is when Luffy is on the piano playing. Or uh, when he's on top of the piano and Brooke is playing. Uh -huh. And it's because that's my favorite moment because Luffy was looking for a musician first, man. Yeah, he was. He was looking for a musician. And like when Brooke is there, it hits. It hits so hard because he was lonely his whole life. I love him, bro. Oh <laughs> you know what's but, special yeah. about the, the Brooke moment too is that 
we always were like, why would Yamato join? She mm -hmm. doesn't have a reason. And the one person we named in the crew that didn't have a reason was just Brooke, right? Yes. Brooke was yes. immediately asked just to be on just because he looked weird. But he mm -hmm. was, but like, like said, Luffy's first Nakama he wanted was a musician. Yeah. So yeah. it makes sense as to why he didn't really need a reason for Brooke to join. He was just like, oh, you play music and you're weird? I bet. <laughs> so is, is that your favorite Brooke moment? No, no, no. My favorite Brooke moment is just anytime he uh, does the 45 degree angle. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, really it. Anytime, bro. Lawrence? Because it'll be super random and he'll just be like, 45 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> There's one of Brooke uh, had me down. I don't know. I don't remember exactly the situation, but you know how Brooke's always making those jokes where like he's... Cause I I'm just bones, yeah. right? He's always making these jokes where like you know I just well I don't have any skin I don't have any flesh, right? But at one time where like something wanted to like eat the straw hats, and they're going after each one, and then they look at Brooke and they're like, and they move and they move on, <laughs> right? they move on. <laughs> Brooke takes that such disrespect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they do because you make all these jokes and you're just bones, but then someone recognizing <laughs> you're just bones, I'm not gonna try and eat you. Whatever. Uh, He's just like, how dare you? <laughs> Tries to take out his sword and like take it out. <laughs> Had me dying because it's like <laughs> his response to it was Honestly, too funny. I, I actually remembered my favorite moment. It's in Whole Cake when mm. uh, Luffy and Brooke are both damaged and they both just drink milk <laughs> and instantly <laughs> regenerate. Like I love that. That oh, is so man. funny. I, I would be quick. Like, my, my favorite Brooke moment was uh, in Whole Cake when he faced Big Mom. I thought that was epic. I thought it was needed. Yes. Yeah. Um, but in general, my introduction to Brooke was a little different than most people because the twins kind of mini spoiled me that they were going to get another crew member while I was catching right, up. Right. And I asked them about him, and they said, like, oh, he's a, a skeleton swordsman. So I'm thinking, like, Yoshimitsu. It's something <laughs> super fire. <laughs> and, and then I meet Brooke, and I'm like, oh... <laughs> <laughs> this is what y'all They're like skeleton with an afro. And I'm like, okay, it's going to be some weird because it's One Piece. And then it was Brooke, and I just couldn't believe it, right? It, it still yeah. shocked me, even though I was spoiled. So, yeah. Brooke, Brooke, shout out to Brooke. Uh, but we got a couple more super chats, so we'll move on. We got another five Canadian dollars from Skylance. It says, RIP to the GOAT. Dragon Ball talk today as well. Let's go. Hashtag Lawrence Akonk. Hashtag Sabaconk as good as kid. Hey, man. <laughs> Hashtag Larry X Big Mom. Sky, we gonna talk in the Discord, bro. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Lex, what's your thoughts on kid? <laughs> oh, no. You can't be doing this to me, bro. Listen. <laughs> he's... Let's just say when him, Law, and Luffy were deciding where to go, he took the wrong path in the New World. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> he took the path straight to Divine Departure. Oh, from yeah. 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 Straight yeah. to Divine Departure. Yeah. 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 I, 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 that's all I'm going to say about Kid, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Another five euros from Ryotaku. It says, rest in peace to the goat father, Akira Toriyama. Big respect to T.O.P.T., for dedicating this episode to the greatest one to ever do it, you have my respect. Of course, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. thanks, man. Yeah, Most we're gonna of us talk wouldn't about be here. It. Yeah, we're going to talk about it a little bit. Yeah. yeah. It's only right. Yeah. Uh, we got another subscription to Yonko status from Cheesy Wombat052. Uh, congrats and welcome. That is our highest tier of membership. So yeah, throw the Nakama fist up for <laughs> Cheesy you. Wombat as well as Ron Lewis, who joined the uh, Yonko status. Another uh, two from Ben Fresh. It says, give me a year. Year. How <laughs> y'all doing, gang? What's up, Ben? <laughs> Wait, like, you did the year too? Year. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Wait, um, wait, like, so you're, 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 you're up in, in Canada, right? I am a Canadian. Yes, yes. yes. I, well, I, what's up, I fam? <laughs> are, wait, wait. Are you guys fellow Canadians? No, 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 no. we're not. We're not. Uh, yeah, we're in the States. We're in Jersey. No. Oh, I, would, dude, I was literally there last year. I loved it there, bro. Yo, yeah. next yeah, time you come it. by, yo, hit me, hit us up, bro. Yeah. Bro, I was yeah. in Canada I, last month. It was a good time. I, hey, I gotta, hey. I gotta tell you though, poutine is trash. I need you to I, know that. Wait, wait, what province did you go? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll talk off, off camera. Oh, yeah, we'll talk okay. off I'm, I'm curious. You probably went to the wrong province. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got another two from Project Iceman. It says, thoughts on the Crunchyroll Awards. Uh, I wasn't able to watch, but I do know Luffy won Best uh, MC. So, well-deserved. Yeah. Did you sense. tap yeah. in, Lex? I honestly didn't. I, um, But I do hear about the awards. I mean... How can Luffy not get best MC after year five, man? Come on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's come true. On. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, it's kind of hard to beat that. Yeah. He was everywhere. Yeah. I think One Piece also won best continued series. 
Um, so I think it's going to be up for that just about every year. Yeah, it would have style. to. Yeah. 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 We got another two from Jared Pettit. Pettit. It says, hashtag Larry B. Pervin. <laughs> I didn't do anything oh. pervy yet. <laughs> I love what you said yet. yet. Yeah, you said <laughs> yet. <laughs> Listen, bro, we're going to be good. Uh-huh. We got another five euros from K- KJ House. It says, yo, from Scotland, the time change has let me catch a live this week. Where are you guys going on vacation in the One Piece world? Little G for me. Just Rosa, I'm going to go see Viola. I'm leaving with yep. something. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I'm definitely, I'm definitely not going to that island. Sanji was training on. Definitely not. Kamabaka yeah. Queendom, bro. Lawrence? Yo, they make good food though. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah they make yeah. really good food. I wouldn't. Trust other other places nothing. got good food too. Bro. Yeah, and I, would, I wouldn't <laughs> trust yeah, yeah, nothing. Yeah. They Listen, make bro. If there was anywhere you should eat poutine from, <laughs> it's probably there, bro. <laughs> I eat Yo, I, I wouldn't. Eat nothing. I wouldn't trust anything they serve. <laughs> yeah. Not a bite. Uh, How so about where you going, too? bro? Where you going, Law? Uh, what are the What are the tropical ones? Uh, Dust Rose is a good one. Under King Riku. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I would. Egghead before, you know, all that free food is dope. Mm-hmm. True, So I would true. go there before, you know, what's happening now. <laughs> yeah, I'll trip <laughs> You know what? You know, they not going to accept you, bro. You, you know why <laughs> Lawrence wants to go there? He wants to create another Lionel. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to make another clone. Yeah. Lex, Lawrence mm-hmm. has a twin <laughs> by the name of Lionel who's on the show, too. He's not here today. But, right, right. yeah, he probably want to make another clone. You're so selfish, bro. How is that selfish? I'm trying to share the love with more me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for everybody, uh, we, he was from Scotland? Yeah. All right, everybody, if you can, please post uh, in the live chat where you're from flag-wise. Do it for me right now. I want to see all the flags from everywhere. I want to know if there's some Canadians. You know, I want to know if everybody's from everywhere. I like seeing that. So. Some Leafs in the chat. Maybe. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. All right. You really trying to be Mr. Worldwide, man. Joe got your head. We got another. <laughs> Stop, bro. Uh, one month membership to Yanko status from Mr. Apologies. It says, daughter is two months today. Congrats, man. Congrats, bro. Congratulations. Y'all been getting me through these sleepless nights for real. <laughs> Shout out to the Discord. Also, got to get broker on the phone. Hey, man, we'll probably get the calls today. I got to get somebody pregnant so I can have a kid, bro. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Bro. Wow. Yeah, bro. Maybe, maybe get married first. I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm gonna move on, man. I'm moving on. We got another five from Larry Lover. Maybe that's your potential. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Lex, your Black Ops Three vids made my childhood. You're a legend, and Seb, bring back the DDT. All right, chill out, bro. <laughs> Why you gotta poison, poison your amazing chat with that kind of talk? But yeah, I gotta tap into Lex's uh, Black Ops videos. Bro. Yeah. I got to. Bro, it's it's down bad over here. I'll, I'll be honest. Like, I, I that's why I love One Piece. I was actually even considering making a theory video uh, channel, and I was just like, nah. I, I I I don't know enough, but like, I love One Piece so much. Just Cod is it's down bad, man. It, it's, it, it's down bad. Yeah, Cod yeah. hasn't been doing too well. Dude, make make no. a One Piece theory video or channel of you playing Cod and just talking about One Piece. Dude, just honestly, theorizing. I, I really, I really need to. I, I it's just, I, I look at the uh, theorists that are like really popping, like people like O'Hara or uh, just all, any of those big guys, and I just, I'm like, man, that quality production they put out is, it's crazy. Like respect to them, they. They they know what's up. They, Yo, they shout know out to all up. the video editors, bro. Yeah, <laughs> for, real, for, for <laughs> real, for yeah, real. Seriously, dude. bro. Yes. Thank you, yes. Arrow Assassin. Thank you, bro. Shout out to Arrow, man. Yo, I will say this, uh, Lex. You ended up uh, playing uh, COD Zombies with Mario uh, modding. Yes. Yes, yes. Is it possible that you know the guy that could do a One Piece COD dude. Zombies? Yeah, so there is a couple <laughs> One Piece maps, but right now they're just like so basic. I would love to get one in. It's, oh, bro, okay, here's a crazy thing. So Fortnite exists, mm-hmm. right? And uh, they have a custom island server kind of coming out. And what I've been thinking of doing is kind of making a zombies type game that's similar to... I, you guys must have heard of Bloxfruits at this point by now. 
It's a Roblox game that is One Piece. Oh based. yeah, I have. Yeah, Somebody yeah. DM me about yeah. this on yeah, Discord. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I've seen it too. Yeah, and so that is kind of what I want to bring to Fortnite, where it's like it's a zombies plus One Piece mixture where you have like powers, but they're more like devil fruits and you can like upgrade them and stuff. So something like that I'm working on. I don't know if I can put it on Call of Duty, but I would love to do it on Fortnite where it, like it kind of fits that aesthetic more, like that one piece type of like goofy power aesthetic, you I'm know. I'm like picturing somebody playing like dropping in Fortnite and then they eat like a devil fruit and now their power system changes to where they can use that devil fruit to fight. Legit. That would yeah, be dude. sick, bro. It'd be sick. Yeah, I like the animations in that game and like all the Unreal Engine 5 stuff they're doing, it's crazy. Like gaming is about to take the next evolution right here. It's it's something else. So I'm mm. excited for it for sure. All right. Yeah. Let's do the next one. We got another 20 from Ron Lewis. Thank you. It says, been watching for a long time. I don't know why I haven't done this yet. But I got some beef with Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Seb's takes are the best, but when he's off, he's off. <laughs> Larry be spitting, but tripping most of the time. <laughs> All hey. of us got smoke, man. Hey. <laughs> Ron, what happened? What's the beef? What's yeah. the beef? Oh, oh, the next Super Chat follows up. $10 from Ron. He be tripping out of words. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I don't know, man. Listen, bro. It I, didn't sound like you came after law at all, bro. Listen. And you, yeah, I got beef. Was, I, that, was I, that for me? I guess. It might have been for Larry. I don't know. Because yeah. technically the continuation of the Share your beef. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want to hear it. Oh, man. All right. Listen, Thank you. Thank you. We got another five from Alex Vargas. It says, question specifically for Larry and law. Who are y'all top three strongest bald anime characters? You can include Western characters. Hashtag Krillin is greater than Kaido. Crazy. Hashtag <laughs> Buggy Gang. Lex, for you, if you didn't see me already, I'm bald. All right, so, I'm I'm halfway there. I'm, just, so, I'm, so, I'm almost there with you. Bro. So is Lawrence. Yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe try to hide it's it. It's shaved head. Why right? am I trying to hide it, bro? So maybe try Listen, hide bro. It, bro. I'm happy to be bald, bro. Yeah, shave bro, my head. I'm happy. I'm proud, bro. Anyway, mm -hmm. top three. Sato's got to be up there, obviously. Saitama, Saitama be, from right. One Punch Man. Yeah, gotta be one. It would be uh, Krillin, most no. likely. After that, from Dragon Ball. I don't like Krillin, though. <laughs> you don't got to like him. Yeah, it's not about liking yeah. him. I don't think Krillin is. There's bald, stronger bald people than Krillin out there. Who? So. I don't know. But somebody out there. Yeah, I was going to say. Somebody. There's not. A, yo, Marv, you know anybody that's bald? That dude, I feel like. Who do you guys think is strong? The guy from um from Vin Bleach. Diesel's pretty strong. Huh? Vin, Vin Diesel? <laughs> Vin Diesel? Yo, you, you, got, you got Krillin or Vin Diesel? Western characters, too. Hold on, Marv. Did you say that and they heard you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Mark got a point, low key. No, he the cars, the cars, Johnny Sins. The Rock. Alright, we're <laughs> done, bro. I don't... Yeah, we're done, bro. I was gonna say that dude from Bleach with the, the sword. It'd probably be the guy from you Bleach. You say the guy from Bleach, bro? Stronger than Krillin? The... Yeah, he sh Wasn't he not he... even a captain? He's not stronger than Krillin, Lawrence. I mean, maybe, but Krillin's not a high bar. He was like, what, what, rank three in Kapachi's group? And that was like the beginning of the show. He got stronger way after that. I guess I, I can't. Speak I'm sure he could take. Krillin is human. This dude is not. Like, come on. Let's let's get real. You gotta stop this, bro. <laughs> Krillin is. It'd probably be Piccolo too. I'm saying we'd have to throw Piccolo. But y'all y'all giving Krillin the stamp over Piccolo. Like Piccolo not yeah. bald. Listen, I. Yo, there was is a couple Boo, Boo, Majin Buu is bald technically. The, the guy's name What's from up? the guy's oh, kid Buu, right? The, the guy's no, he's not bald. He has like a. That he, antenna? That's not, that's that's not that. hair. He has like a penis on his head, That's bro. not hair, bro. It's like an antenna, first of all. And Listen, if you had something on top of your head, bro, you're not so the, technically I, bald. I, I, what are that's you not talking hair. about, that's bro? Not hair. It doesn't matter. You, he literally just said Piccolo, and Piccolo doesn't have two of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Lex. You're not familiar no, with Dragon no, Ball Z. I, I was just Larry saying, y'all know Meruem from Hunter x Hunter, right? Are, are they bald? Is she bald? Well, uh, is he it a girl? Oh, yeah, no, no, it's, a, it's an humanoid it's an insect. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but Merom has a helmet, but I'm going to be honest, underneath that, he's got to be bald. I'm almost certain. So yeah. it's like, I, I think I think you can include that, or like Aang from Avatar. The mm. last you can say Aang too. Counts. Yeah. Yo, but there's know. not much people, like the guy's name from Bleach is Ikaku, if I'm correct. He's not strong in the freezer, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yo, but Frieza, Like, you get what I'm saying? Frieza Wait. not technically human, right? So he, he can't be considered. He didn't say human, he said characters. 
But the guy from Bleach is not human at all. They're like spirit creatures or whatever they are. Oh, like, okay, Shinigami. Bro. Okay, bro. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're legit. <laughs> Supposed to be like Lawrence, uh, come on, death or uh, whatever. Technicalities now. Come on. They're bro. not human though. Krillin right. is very much human. Next one. And Krillin never got stronger than Tien, did he? Did he get stronger than Tien? Hum- Krillin is the strongest human being in Dragon Ball, bro. That don't mean much to me, bro. Did he get stronger than Tien? Of course, bro. When? Yeah, he got strong on the team, bro. He did? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to a coward, bro. I'm sorry. I can't I, do that. I don't mean he got strong. You're so Black terrible, Black dude's a coward. Bro. We got another six from Dennis D- D- Drives. It's okay, Drives? bro. I, I'm sorry with the names, y'all. Y'all Just know say the first name, bro. From Dennis, uh, a question for all of you. Which named attack got Luffy hurt the most from Kaido in y'all's opinion? Ah, oh, man. It'd be Ragnaroku, right? After the CP0 agent interfered and he got bodied. <laughs> Do off screen attacks count? <laughs> <laughs> they oh, the, named, oh, the one before he got thrown off the island? Mm. That's not uh, named, though. You oh. remember when he got thrown off of Onigashima and he yes, landed in yeah, the water? Yeah. So are you was saying, that a named attack, though? No, he just was thrown off. <laughs> Kaido oh, okay. was just done with him. He, but I, it, was, it was all off screened. I was going to say Red Rock because after that first one, he probably got hit with those thousands of times. <laughs> like, just the, just the constant Red oh, Rocks. I want to say... Uh, wait, know. hold on. You're saying Luffy hits Kaido? No, no, no. Or Ka- Kaido hits Luffy? Hurt Luffy the most. Kaido hurt From Luffy. Kaido, yeah. Kaido From hurt Kaido. Yeah, Kaido yeah. Attacks. yeah. Oh, okay. okay, yeah. I want to say Thunder Bago just because he got one-shotted, right? He got yeah. one-shot. I mean, we're talking about overall. Like, Luffy at a weaker level got hit by this attack and got... You know what I'm saying? Not clean out. So I want to say that one. No, there's there's like a stronger than them, Bragi. The one he. Um... But the question is, which one hurt Luffy the most, right? So th- that I... attack knocked yeah. Luffy out with one swing. All the other stuff, he was kind of like, all right, I'm bouncing back or whatever. It has to be Thunder Bogwa. Bro took three L's before he could <laughs> take on the title. Yo, I, but like, like w, Ragnarok, who you know? technically. Murked him. Is, what, is that the one yeah. that he put so much like Conqueror's hockey yeah. into it? Yeah, that and it looked crazy. Luffy had to like plot out of like not <laughs> passing away. Yeah, yeah. He went to Gear Five immediately after that because he was like, "Yo, what yeah. happened?" Like mm-hmm. everybody felt he he passed. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Bro, I, was, I was the one like he got balloon. hit well in Gear Fifth, where Kaido was just like. When he was explaining that, uh, yeah, you you, you make uh, you're having fun with your ability, but ca- hockey rules all. The amount of yes. conquest he put into that. Nah, right? nah, nah. Rock, Ragnarok was different, bro. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. All right. We got another 10 from Mama Kid. It says, RP the GOAT, Akira Toriyama. Hype for the stream today. My question is in the spirit of DBZ. Which character from DBZ would you put in the One Piece world to experience the journey as a pirate or Marine? Oh, man. I, I feel like it's so easily Goku. Bro. Oh, yeah. Because that's where Luffy's kind of based off of. If you put Frieza on the Marine side, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you he, feel me? He going after the monkeys, bro? You kidding me? Yo, bro. Oh, bro. You kidding me, bro? Bro. <laughs> you kidding me? It's like a match made in heaven. Frieza is like the he's like the world government incarnate, bro. Bro, he's so racist. The Fishman, <laughs> yeah, Fishman crazy, Island would have been destroyed, bro, immediately. Dude, he been doing the that island didn't exist they his don't whole even, life. They wouldn't eat like fish sandwiches in the cafeteria <laughs> at the Marines. Because they're like, yo, you're not, you know. Make make Frieza, Frieza for Fleet Admiral. Make the Marines great again. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wasn't there a spin off episode with Luffy and Goku? I thought that happened, right? That yeah. was that filler? Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. filler. It was filler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No oh man, who who else would be a good one? That's what I'm trying to think. I know we, all right, it's hands down like Goku as a pirate because it would be come Goku, on. yeah. Um uh, Vegeta think... Vegeta's like the Zoro. Oh not not <laughs> Well, Krillin would... He'd be would, a Yonko, apparently. Stop nah, me. Krillin would... <laughs> we Krillin not. would try to bag. Like, he, <laughs> he would try to go to Amazon Lily he, and he try would, to get a girlfriend. Dude, Krillin would go to Egghead I'm you right and now. try to get no. an Android I'm saying right now. Bro. Krillin Jeez. is the Kobe w- that would fail. That's Krillin. <laughs> You're so... Dang. That's Krillin. You're so okay. disrespectful, bro. He would Why, fail. What do you have against Krillin? He's a coward, man. You know me. Come on, bro. Lex? He, I mean... I I have got nothing to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. man. Next. All right. <clears throat> I was trying to do a poll. Uh, there we go. There we go. There we go. We have a lot. 
left. Couple. couple. Yeah. Uh, decent amount. We got another 20 from Larry302. It says, what's up, my boys? And Larry, my bad for missing the past couple of streams. I had to beat some fraud allegations. And that female that came over a couple weeks ago, well, she's pregnant now, so I'm finna pull a dragon. <laughs> what? Nah, I'm just Yo, what is wrong what with you? Yo, this is what oh, you inspire, no. bro. Bruh, bruh, bruh. I inspire pr promiscuity. Apparently, he said, yeah. "What's your opinion, bro?" <laughs> What's it, my opinion? After that, right? Then he asked. No, he says, "No, nah, I'm just kidding." Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah okay, just get, just continue the cycle, bro. Be there for don't for that be child. there for your child wow. the same way. Be there you know? for that child, bro. And just remember, for the next time, let it builds character, bro. Plan B: yeah. six dollars at Costco. We got another five <laughs> from Luffy Length. Y'all gotta stop these versus streams pandering to the Naruto fandom. Who in that verse is surviving the dawn symbol? Having every organ crushed thin. Um, I mean, people in our verse survived it, right? In the, in the One Piece verse, survived it. So, like, yeah. you take on the properties of what Luffy did to you. Yeah. Like, Kazaru didn't just get his bones crushed. Like that. I mean, I guess he's a little oggy, yeah, so. Uh, at least no, we, at least know. we know that like Luffy can make it clap. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> oh man! Oh man! I don't even want to see that. I don't even want to picture that. Bro. Oh, I feel like a lot of because was able to um, endure that mostly because he's also light. You know, he's, nah, he's a loggy. It's hockey, bro. Come on. No, bro. I'm talking about like after, like, all right, Luffy did it, then he throws him into the ship. My, my point right? is, Luffy could do that to somebody who's not a loggy and they would survive it, right? Like, they, he doesn't, like, you're not yeah. just gone no. now. Like, your bones also get turned into whatever well, that is. Well, I'm talking about Gazaro's admiral shank. Take, like, you know, someone who's nowhere near that strong. I'm not gonna say base like a regular person because they would pass from that. Yo, the, the thing is, it's I'm just Toon gonna, Force. I'm just gonna say, Pell exists. Bro. Yo, hold on. He's a Zoan. But Lawrence, beyond that, it's Toon Force. Right? Pell exists. Bro. Yo, it's Toon yeah. Force. Pell, Zoan, right? Force. Pell surviving that. So, yeah. no, I'm saying anyone is. Can. It's Toon Force. You don't pass. Krillin you surviving. You know what I mean? But like, that's the, the point the of the Toon Force, bro. It's, yes. it's yeah. Toon. No, yeah, but he doesn't pass. Not the people he's. Fighting because no. then, then you won't be able to beat anybody. Which what cartoon character got hit with something like this and straight up passed away? No, no, it I, doesn't no, happen. I understand that's that. the point of two then, fours. That's because true, you're true. just saying that Luffy's not gonna beat anybody. No, he's not gonna <laughs> ah end anyone. We can. Well, I, I think like the yeah. same comparison you can take with. I think this is like an awakened ability, right? The same comparison would be like Doflamingo turning someone into string. Right, that's kind of like I feel the same way because it with Luffy's awakening, he's putting his properties onto someone else. So I don't think that would kill them, even if it was a basic civilian. It mm. would just cartoonify them. Exactly. Right. It, it is. It's just like the awakening of his ability off of uh, towards other things. That's what I think a Devil Fruit awakening really is. It's your abilities going towards other things externally outside of you. Mm. That's, I mean, that's what I get, at least from Doflamingo's fight, especially. Like, I mean, he turns the whole city into string, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Something yeah. Kid can't do, by the way. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. We got another two from Larry Lover. It says, Larry looking cute right now, not gonna lie. You look what? good, bro. No. Thanks, bro. That beard coming in, for real. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wish I could grow my beard like that. We got another 11 month member to Yonko status from the broker. It says, Hi guys, wish me luck getting on today as I need to share my theory before it comes true. Hi Lex, I'm just discovering you today, but after hearing your Zoro take, you have yourself a new subscriber. Yay. <laughs> Yay. A lot of people don't like Zoro like that. Uh, Fellow Zoro hater. <laughs> I cannot understand hating Zoro. That's wild. That's we got so another funny. five from Larry302. It says, and I thought, and Larry, I thought Dragon dashed out of there too. You are not alone. <laughs> oh, in the last <laughs> chapter. Hashtag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Lex, like. uh, there's a, I, I, I was forced to believe, since Dragon doesn't ever do anything, right? Yeah. That uh, in the panel that we saw him in, there was like two yeah. vertical panels after that, that yeah. he might have like uh, just basically ran so fast that it created like those dash yeah. lines. I, I, I think we're getting a Logue Town moment from Dragon again. That's 100% what we're getting here. On how, yes, because how is Luffy going to survive with all the Straw Hats against the Gorosei if Dragon doesn't come in? 
He the, has to come in. The way he's he only survived. To, bro, why did bro get a panel in this last chapter with just three dots? That was it. That was it. That's dude. every dragon panel. <laughs> 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 yeah, like, really I mean, is. like, he's got to come in, man. Especially because they're tying in the importance of O'Hara now. And that mm. if Vegapunk mm. also is, like, pretty much the centerpiece of what's happening still i think dragon has to come in man why would they why would oda give that dragon and vegapunk flashback on ohara if he's not gonna appear in the anime or in in the show right now so so he so if he doesn't what happens for you <laughs> oh we're, we're cooked man <laughs> <laughs> I, I think he, he has to come in eventually. Like, um, I, I think it's interesting because Dragon has appeared in the show when there are questions about the power system. So, for example, with Logetown, we didn't know what Logias were at the time. And I think now Dragon is reappearing because I have a theory, basically, that Emu's ability is not a devil fruit, but it's the true form of hockey. That is my opinion about it especially mm. because in the final panel of the last chapter they have oda specifically put in a panel where the marines specifically say that is lightning and i know it's the age-old debate of hockey lightning and mm -hmm. what type of hockey it is but it's just like i think for sure and especially also i don't know if you saw the lucia kingdom uh anime just got basically done two months ago where they show the kingdom getting blown up yeah. uh, in the anime to me that doesn't scream ancient weapon that doesn't scream devil fruit it screams the true form of hockey because it's like people always say like devil fruits come from the tree right so where does hockey come from where is the true source of hockey is it really willpower or is there something more to it oh, you know snap. so you're just questioning yeah. willpower itself overall yes yeah because it like the idea of a fruit right is that what is a fruit without the tree right there is a there's an obvious source for fruits there is no fruit without a tree even though we've seen in punk hazard that the devil fruit just magically appears on some random apple but like there, there's a source right and i obviously we've seen with eam the the garden and the tree there and i think obviously that has something to do with devil fruits but i think we don't know the true source of hockey and i think very very few people ever did maybe not even someone like kaido maybe only gold roger and emu i think that is like something that has to be discovered because it's like man you look at the you look at the last pass uh the last panel with the gorose and those lightning beams look like hockey lightning beams man the ones that the Gorosei get summoned, they just look like big versions of Hockey Lightning. Mm -hmm. It looks so similar. Yo, Lex, you I... might have to start that channel, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I've never heard that before. Yeah. That was wild. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, th just thinking about it. Like, he is the... Come on! Do it now! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so just to, re just to recap. But well, he's just... basically saying that the hockey itself is just a component of something that's a source of, right? So, like, if there's a tree... The devil fruits came off that tree, and now they can reproduce randomly if they so chose to. But there's still a tree there, mm -hmm. right? What's the yes. genesis of the yeah. tree? So the gen or... he's using that same idea mm -hmm. for hockey. There yeah, might, there did he might say be... the source was, though? No. No, oh, no okay. he didn't no, say we, the source We, yeah, we don't know the okay. source. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I thought I you think, said it. Okay. Yeah, I, so I have a theory about it. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever picked up on this. There's two people with the same eye type in the show emu and mihawk mm -hmm. they both have the same type of eyes and i was wondering what do those two potentially have in common and here's something that i've never actually heard a lot of people talk about this mihawk is the only character in the whole verse who has blackened his sword with hockey the only character Potential. the only person and i've wondered it's not, confirmed, that... it's not confirmed though. It's, it's, it's not confirmed. Not confirmed. Yeah, it's not confirmed. But, but from what we know, <laughs> from what we know so far, he is one of the only people who have done it. And I'm, I wonder if you get those type of eyes mm -hmm. because you imbue your hockey into something. And I wonder if Emu is blackened out because Emu imbued the hockey like permanently. You know how like, um, who was it? Uh, in uh, the Punk Hazard arc, 
is it Virgo that was like full hockey and yeah. he's just like completely yeah. blacked out? You saying he was like a permanent version of that? Uh, that's my guess uh -huh. right now. We don't know. Obviously, we don't know enough. But like to me, that is the only similarity I can grab from two completely opposite characters like Emu and Mihawk is that they both have those same eyes because it's like they truly mastered the form of imbuing their armament hockey onto something. That is my only guess right now. So right. you're saying so what you're saying is that Emu's a hockey man. <laughs> I, I, I think so. I I, I listen, I think I so love to hear it. I when Sabo goes to the throne room, right, and you see all of the Gorosei, to me the Gorosei like I've heard some people say that they act like Zoans, where they have like the hybrid form, the animal form, and then the regular form. I don't agree with that because you look at them in the panel and they look like shadows. They look like some sort of like manipulatable substance, you yeah. know? And I think that the Gorosei could be even a part of Emu's will. Like maybe Emu has imbued her hockey onto like something devilish or something that has like gained its own sort of life form. I don't personally believe that the Gorosei are actually human beings. I, I, I don't think that's the case because... They get like instantly summoned. What other character just gets instantly summoned? Like that ability is very rare. Only one other person has ever had that being Kuma, where he can send people instantly to another place, mm -hmm. right? That's a very interesting ability. And I think it almost confirms that the Gorosei aren't actually human. Like they've lived for so long in the flashbacks on God Valley. They look the exact same, mm -hmm. right? As they do now. I don't think they're human. I really, at least for sure, I can think that. Like, there's no way that the Gorosei are human. They're named after planets, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Something something about that to me. Yo, just a kangaroo no. pouch off what he said. This is probably the reason why black people are so, like, strong in the verse. <laughs> because they're close enough to being hockey men. I hate you. <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Bro. Yeah, what you got for that, man? <laughs> <laughs> you go off with that. Opinion. I just want to add, though, we do have Ryuma, though, who blackened his blade. Oh, yeah. that's true. That is true. Yeah, he confirmed we, it. We ain't seen his eyes either, though. That, see, that's, yeah, that's the other yeah. truth as well. We monster. don't know what his eyes look like. Yeah. We don't. We don't. That is true. Yeah. I mean, we did see the, the newest uh, anime adaptation. I mean... Did you did you watch the anime adaptation of Monster? Of of uh, of, of which arc specifically? Like it's, it's not an or... arc. It's it's basically um, Oda did like a prequel to One Piece called Monsters. Oh, oh, it, it's on I, Netflix. I haven't seen it, but I've seen bits and pieces of it. Yes, yeah, like you gotta on, watch online. it. It's good. Yeah, I, I will. Yeah, yeah it's really good. It yeah, good. I enjoyed yeah. it. Mm -hmm. All right, we got another five from Darius Chase. It says, dude's tripping, nothing better than Goku's first transformation. Hashtag Bucky Gang. In Lex's defense, true, true. has no, not I seen it. Dragon Ball. Yeah. I, no, so. I have not seen Dragon Ball. I will see it. Yes, I, mm -hmm. I'm... I'm such a shameful person. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I, I will check it out. It's I will okay. check it out. It's yeah. okay. Another five from Ron Lewis. He said Gear 5 is better. Not cut this cam and Mike. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. man. <laughs> no, I, listen, man, I, I respect what Super Saiyan did, though, for sure. I mean, even Oda shows his respect towards it. I, I have to say, like, it is a huge deal. I wasn't a part of it. I yeah. wasn't a part of the community at the time. I started at watching anime in 2014. Yeah. So I, it's only been 10 years for me. Like, I'm fairly new to the scene as mm. compared to a yeah. lot of people here. And, so. and Lex, I just want to yeah. say, because these people ain't going to say it, I appreciate yeah. you being honest and not just saying, oh, Super Saiyan is the top one for me. When you have, If you haven't seen it or experienced it like we did, don't just add that to your top one. That's late. Right, yeah, right. right. Like, yeah, we, yeah. we lived it. We saw it. It was crazy. But if you have right. it, don't just, oh, Super Saiyan. Nah, man. Stand on that. But, yeah, yeah. Respect, respect. Yeah. All right. Another five from Alex Vargas. It says, if Usopp got his hands on an AA-12 with a switch, he would be, would he be top 30 in the verse? <laughs> Hashtag law, we love you. Hashtag said we appreciate you. Hashtag Larry got bad takes. Just kidding. <laughs> Hashtag Larry top one. Um... <laughs> Usopp can't be top 30, bro. 
I don't think there's any universe no, that we live in no. that Usopp could become top thirty. Yeah. What if What if he gets conquerors in hot in uh like in no, Elba? Like, I'm one of those rare stop, people that think that stop, there's an no, avenue for Usopp to get conquerors, no, and I still no, don't think he'd be top thirty. He's the exact listen, opposite listen. of a conqueror. Stop dude, it. dude has had almost zero progression since the new world Good. other than that one moment in dress rosa where he unlocks observation <laughs> i think he's got a big arc coming up in elbaf man he's got something fucking bro it's not hockey though that that would be the closest thing yeah. honestly there's one comment that usab said and this is going back to pre Tomsic, where he might not even be able to use like <laughs> hockey hardening bro Remember when, like, you know, the whole um, Perona's ability mm -hmm. with the ghost, it makes you negative or depressed, right? You think of how hockey works, like the, the art of not doubting. It didn't work on Usopp because he doubts himself so much. Wow, He's so negative that, that it didn't work. Uh -huh. So he may not even be able to manifest hockey harning at all. So observation, yeah, but regular hockey, he may not be able to do it because... But is, isn't that the opposite of his dream, though? His dream is to become the true warrior of the sea. Talk so you would mind. expect that a true warrior would at least know Sorry. armament. Right, because everybody can learn armament and observation, but not conquer. Great so, storytelling is know. getting that character from that <laughs> to yes. what we see in him. No, yes. not a conqueror though. All right, I'll give <laughs> no. you maybe hot using hockey, but that's 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 it. It's not gonna be a conqueror. Bro. What, what what if Yasop has conquerors though? What about that? What if his dad has conquerors? Your dad can have something. You don't got. I mean, yeah. he left his kid. He better have it. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible man. I'm gonna move on though. <laughs> Upgraded membership to Yango status from Roy Stokes. Thank you, Roy. Uh, that's our highest tier of membership. Enjoy the emojis that come with being a Yanko. We got another Nakama status membership uh, from Hancho De Hose. It says, What's good, my Nikas? <laughs> oh my God, bro. Come on. Hancho, you wildin', bro. You wildin'. <laughs> another 20 from Red Max. It says, Funny he mentioned it fell down. It actually shows that Luffy's normal rubber. Because when Mr. Three got to the fire part of the jail, he was melting when Luffy was just perfectly fine. When it was always stuck with me, uh, it always stuck with me. Now it makes sense. Maybe I have to go back and rewatch that scene. Hmm. But yeah, we got another upgraded membership from uh, Nakama to Shichibukai from Skyland. So thank you. Enjoy the emojis that come with being a warlord, Sky. Uh, another five from Sean Don G. It says. The build-up to Teen Gohan's SS2 transformation was definitely one of the best transformations in anime. P.S. Krillin beats Kaido. Mm. You gotta watch Dragon Ball, man. You got to. Uh, another five from Virgil for DLC. It says, was trying, was watching old episodes back when Larry was hating on Law's beard. Now Law has conquers hockey and a beard. <laughs> Hashtag Larry for Soviet <laughs> King. Hashtag it's Lionel. <laughs> Oh, man. Lawrence really got his head. A whole beard. Yo, he drew a whole beard overnight. Yo, it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> when you will something, man. <laughs> <laughs> Another five from CJ. It says, Larry, rub his hands like the Last Supper when he say, let's get into the chapter every time. <laughs> 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 Yo, do I do that? Yo, you do. I do? What do I do? I do this? Yo, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Mark, right. stop laughing, bro. <laughs> Marv be laughing behind the glass. Like, oh, man. He said, and be honest, Lair Bear, you hate the super chats. <laughs> I don't think he hates them. It's just, we don't have a lot of time sometimes. Yeah. We don't. We don't. And it's a lot of super chats sometimes. Like right now. A lot. Uh, so, uh, not too many. Another 10 from Kirby. It says, in your opinion, why hasn't Luffy or Zoro taught the rest of the Straw Hats a form of hockey? I feel like Chopper or Frankie would be OP with the right hockey moveset. Hashtag Monster Point Solos. Hashtag Boa Gang. I, I want to talk about that, actually. I right. think it's because uh, Luffy respects his crew that he doesn't want to implant his own ways onto other people. Like, uh, the best way I can describe that is the amount of respect that everybody had for gold roger and his crew when he left what it was just testament to that you know and luffy's walking down the same boat i feel like if you were to teach hockey to chopper it it wouldn't have the same like grasp and also luffy and zoro both technically learned hockey themselves they didn't really have an instructor. Like, while, yes, Rayleigh did teach Luffy, Luffy unlocked the ability by himself. Same thing with Usopp. He unlocked observation by himself. So I think it's like, if it is there, it will just 
happen, mm-hmm. you know? But yeah, I, I don't know. I fully agree with that. To me, it's it's about the characters, right? Like, yeah. I don't think anything would be more out of character than Luffy or Zoro or Sanji going, "All right, hey guys, let's let's take some time to teach you guys some hockey." That's not the yeah. That's yeah. not anywhere near what they have been like for the yeah. duration of the series. So if they were yeah. to do it, mm-hmm. it would be so jarring to see, right? Yeah, like I imagine agree. Luffy like, "Hey, Usopp, it's time for you to learn some hockey." That's just yeah. not happening. That's not happening yeah. to me anyway. I think if they ask, they'll get it. <sighs> Like, if they ask, like, yo. But other than that, if they don't ask, then it's nothing to worry about. Mm. Yeah. I, I think, honestly, too, as well as what you guys just said, uh, you know, hockey is your will. So you kind of have to manifest it or awaken it yourself first. Then I can think they could probably, like, Luffy and Zoro and Saji could probably show them some pointers. To awaken it for you, they can't do how to use it, they can't do it. But they could show you, like, I guess, like, for example, how, um, what's his name? Uh, dang it. The samurai in Wano that was trying to help Luffy learn Ryo, right? What's his name? Hogan Hogan Girl? Hogan Girl. Hogan Girl. Yeah. Hogan Girl. Like this is yeah. what uh, what he was actually teaching Luffy. This is something he couldn't even do himself. Like that advanced hockey. Right. He said, "I could. I'm not there yet. I'm not there, but I could show you what how the the flowing." He understood that. So I feel like they could probably show them like give them pointers in that way. But hockey is something that you have to have within to manifest yeah. outward. So they would have to show that first, and them trying to use it like, "Hey, just let it flow this way," you know? Right. Pointers, yeah. yeah. Actual, yeah, just straight like, up training. Nah. Yeah, that's something they yeah. do on their own. Yeah, and so some characters are designed for hockey. Like, uh, could you imagine Frankie with hockey? That would be so bizarre. It's like <laughs> his his goal is to be like ca- kind of following the footsteps of Vegapunk. Like, it's not he's not trying to be Rayleigh or Gold Roger. You know, like it's his own world that he's in. Hockey is mm. not really in that world. Yeah, to right? that to that so. point, I think in general the Straw Hats as a whole, like the top three have their specific fighting styles that hack slash beat up punch kick whatever that gravitate towards the hockey improvement and things. But all the other ones fight in such. Bro, I way. just want to see him throw his his uh, sideburns with hockey on. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I don't know, you know, just throw a lights with hockey, bro. How's yeah, that helping? Yo, That's not helping. Yo, it blocks observation <laughs> somehow, bro. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, bro. About, huh? We got another five from Ron Lewis. It says, name three characters in One Piece that get so overhyped, you hope they just drop dead. Me, it's Zoro, Mihawk, and Shanks. What's wow. all the Zoro hate today? Wow. Yeah, there's a lot of Zoro hate. There's a lot wow. of Zoro hate. Bro, I'm not that big of a hater. He's my top three bottom. Nah, nah, nah. But... Uh, can I give an interesting one? I want to be honest. Katakuri. Mm. I think he gets overhyped. Yo, thank you, <laughs> Lex. Yeah. Thank I'm you. Like, thank like, you. He, he, he oh is the guy. I'm bro, subbing right now, bro. He's the most overhyped character because <laughs> Oda literally had to make a special paramecia typing <laughs> just for him to even work in the story, dog. <laughs> I mean, come on, bro. <laughs> you know? Oh. I, and, and then he's gone. After, after Whole Cake? He's an afterthought. He's gone. He's like, done. Lex, I'm going to need you to learn some respect. <laughs> right? I need you to drink. I, I need him to drink some water, no. eat a banana, no. come back, yeah. and, and, and readjust your thought process on that. Because that is oh, crazy Lex, disrespectful. Don't ever bro. stand off that soapbox, bro. Live there. Dude, Live no, there. I, I, that is disrespectful. I, I love Katakuri, but I think, I think I don't know, he's, he's kind of overhyped. So how about, how about Marco? Mar- oh, Marco's a different story though. Oh, he's he didn't different. get his hype. He didn't get his hype. He didn't get his hype. He's a different story. Marco huh? did not get his hype. Damn, yo, that's crazy. He Marco, did it. I, I don't see Marco as a hype character because to you. me, he's more of like the father figure that replaces Whitebeard for Ace now. Mm. Like, not really, but Damn. you see also in Wano how Marco introduces the wings of the Pirate King, Sanji and Zoro, when they mm. fight King and Queen, right? Like, he's like the person that is sort of like the intermediary i would say for mm. whitebeard i don't see him as hyped because his character literally allowed sanji and zoro to shine in wano there's mm. no way he's overhyped man i i even think he's underutilized personally i want to ask you a question lex right <laughs> i want to ask you a question all right more yeah, so yeah. ask many questions <laughs> well, before we got to marine Fort, and this is my this is one of my biggest things is why i come at marco so much right and i'm yeah. saying it changed now but this is why before we got to Marine Ford, right? Who were we introduced to on Shibodi? It was Rayleigh, right? Yes. The yeah. right hand man of the Pirate King. And we yeah. seen a little bit what he can do. 
You know, his strength a hundred times stronger than the current strong hats. And that's probably even an understatement, you know? Yes. Right? Yeah. Uh, Conqueror's user um, and able to, like, stop an arrow, like, in his old age, like, easy yeah. work, even, like, cutting him, right? We've seen the strength of this, just a little bit of his strength. We, we saw, like, nothing from Rayleigh, but we could just imagine his strength, right? Right. Now, going to Marine Ford War now. From what we saw, heard about Marco, did we not believe that this was Whitebeard's right hand man? What Marco? did we even hear about? Did, we, did, well, it was kind of said that. We didn't even hear about it. said, though, right? We didn't the hear most trusted, The most trusted, <laughs> the most trusted, the yo, right hand man. Yo. No, did, you, did you not believe that Marco was his right hand man? Because they, they kind of said this. They kind of said bro, they, they even bro said that. got punched own. by Garp, okay? <laughs> Garp is like top five in the verse, bro. Like this guy literally took on rocks with gold Roger. I mean, that's mm. a tall order to live up to. Mm. So I, I don't know. Like, I think, yes, Marco didn't have enough of a time to shine in Whitebeard or, or sorry, in Marineford. Um, but he got punched by Garp. Man. Garp, <laughs> Garp is a is a G, bro. He is he's top five in the but verse. No, I understand this is Garp, talking, but Garp is also in his old age, though. But yeah, that's yeah. another factor. But the thing is, right? Well, I tried, my main thing was like because it was it's even said pre uh, post time skip that Marco's the right hand man of Wiper. Manga that's canon because it's in the manga, right? So if he's right hand then, then he had to be right hand then two years ago. That didn't change, right? Even before that. Yeah, you showed if you were to just compare, if Whitebeard is supposed to be the rival of Roger, mm -hmm. right? The man he drew with, right? His right hand man should be what? I'm not gonna say at Rayleigh's level, but somewhere close. Marco is not even close. Yo, but to one, one of those crews went on to become Pirate King. The other one didn't. Doesn't change that. Bro. It does. It does not change. It does. That, I have, it does no, not. I have an exception with that. Okay, so when Gold Roger and Whitebeard were fighting on that random island. Marco was fighting against Rayleigh. He ah. was putting he was putting up the same type of uh, abilities. Like, sure, okay, Rayleigh stopped them with the hockey, right? But I mean, they fought for three days, three nights. Listen, he Keep wasn't fighting Rayleigh for no three days. Anyway, I'm a so, Marco yeah. guy. We, so, we not about to act like he was fighting Rayleigh even. No, it's, it's, <laughs> he, he was. So this is what Lionel understands, right? Yeah. Is uh, and this is probably true because because. See what we saw that Marco does, obviously doesn't fill this role, right? His real right hand man was Odin, right? I agree. Been, I agree. Yeah, yeah. and I then agree. but we don't know what happened to Odin. But Marco yeah. was the more like the favored son. Yeah, you know. Right, right. So right. then he got not necessarily say special treatment, but but in that position, not due to his strength, but just because he was favored. I don't want to linger on this too long, but Lawrence, you highlighted everything that's wrong with your take already yourself. You said <laughs> how you viewed. Marco before with the hype, etc., was in comparison to how he was supposed to look like in comparison to Rayleigh, right? Yeah. We didn't have an example of any of the current generation's Yonko's right hands yet until Marco showed up. You were disappointed by Marco. So then when you see what the what they look like when they're fleshed out in totality, anything Katakuri did would be more impressive to you because you already got disappointed. Because you already compared Marco to Rayleigh. You're not now comparing Kata Curry to Rayleigh. You're comparing him to Marco and his lack of showing. It's yeah. it's like you don't see that. And you just explained it yourself. Sebastian. Sebastian. Uh, like, no, you, no. You know what I'm, I'm not even going to go with the fact that, all right, I'm not going to hold this against Marco that he's not a conqueror. Because you, to me, I believe you got to be born with it. I'm not going to hold that against him. You but can. The, the main, no, I'm not going to because that's not fair. You know? To me, what, may I come at Marco is all reasonable. The main thing I also get on him is also his strength level, where he should be at, Compared to to uh, Katakuri's level and compared to, at that time, Rayleigh's level, but we took that out. But also, Albert's level. He's not there. His use of hockey, he, I he's would say he is. No, his pure ability to base, and again, he didn't even take his ability far. It's the very big, it's almost kid level, like with his ability, bro. <laughs> Like yeah, you have this crazy <laughs> Hawk's ability, and you do you don't expand it. It's like oh, I get healed from attacks, and I can fly. And oh, I use a kick. I use my wings to kick. That's all we see from Marco. We don't see no extra hockey because again, ability is gonna power you up. So your strength level doesn't you through ability wise doesn't make you stronger. Your abilities that like, but it goes into how how you train your hockey and where you take your ability. Dogtooth and Doflamingo, right? They raise your ability and even awaken it. That's their feat. Because you, you have to use your own strength to awaken your ability. We haven't even seen that from Marco, right? His ability is a very, very baseline. Very, very basic. Ultimately, uh, you're, it's fine. You can feel that way. 
Kata Curry and Doflamingo were able to have elongated fights with the main character. We got to see them fighting. Do you want to know why we didn't get that from Marco? I don't know. We did. We had to see it. Do you want to know why we didn't get it from Marco? Do you want to know why we don't get it from Marco? But do you want to know why we don't get it from Marco? Because he doesn't deserve it. He's not. <laughs> he's not a main character no, no. or a main villain. Because he's not in that category right, that we would get this from. He's not there. He's not that level. He said it himself. He's not that level. Yeah. That's why we don't get it from him. Yeah, that's I crazy. Can't, bro. I can't. To, to advocate for Marco, though, I do have to say there's not a lot of characters in One Piece that have strong healing abilities. They're very rare, and so Marco is one of that character, like yeah. one of those types of devil fruits. I think that also puts him higher but i do get what you're saying where it's like he doesn't have the feats that the right man hand of white beard should have i yeah. get that but i do think though that he still deserves it because of the type of abilities he gets because for example you could say the same thing about katakuri right because it's like katakuri while yes he's very strong his devil fruit is a special paramecia it literally didn't even exist prior to his character introduction and so it's like, who is category category without that devil fruit, right? So a Kagakaki user and a future yeah. set user and a future set user and an advanced yeah. arm and hockey user. That's but true. That's that, true. But that's none true. of those are for Marco. That's like that's what that's the yeah. whole point. Yeah. It's like yeah. all Marco's strength is just oh I ate an ability and guess what now I'm this strength. It's like for example I'm not saying this is third week but like if Luffy ate the ability and was already Nika level. Is this Luffy's strength? No, you ate the ability That's and he gave true. you that fruit. Luffy yeah. had to strengthen his ability because remember, Luffy couldn't even throw a punch when he first ate it. Oh, yeah. So yeah. he had to yeah. train it. Lu Lu Yo, Lawrence really 1v2ing y'all right now. <laughs> That's, <it. laughs> That's what Mark will be having to do. He clutching up. That's what Mark will be having he to do. He clutching up. Yeah. No, he don't. He stay getting jumped. You know? <laughs> he stay getting jumped. He stay Come getting on, jumped. Man. You feel me? Big Mom, mm. King, wow. Queen, wow. Blackbeard, his whole gang. You wow. feel me? They jump Marco. Mm -hmm. uh, admirals, Vice so, Admirals. So Marco was it's never the one. <laughs> Marco was by himself against Blackbeard? It's rarely the one. That's crazy. It's rarely the one. That's crazy. Just saying. We got another five from Kirby. It says, why are people saying Blackbeard packs up a Kainu? Hashtag agenda piece is fraudulent. Uh, who are, are you Blackbeard gang, Lex? Uh, I listen, I, I have to be because he has the best paramecia. I mean, he, in my opinion, Logia. he beats a Kainu. Oh, he or, has sorry, a Gura Sorry, too. Logia. Yeah, yeah sorry. he has the Gura too, which is a paramecia. But oh, sorry, best Logia and best paramecia. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, look at the fight between Blackbeard and Ace and tell me Blackbeard wouldn't win against the Kainu. It's the same thing. It's two nah, logias, nah. but the the darkness <laughs> absorbs that logia, man. Nah. He has the best logia. Period. Period. You sure bro. about that? There's no debate. Like, There's no sure about debate. That? <laughs> like, like you on one now, bro. You on <laughs> one now, like. Uh, well, okay, hockey, different story. But Dev Devil Fruit specifically, they don't name it the best. Paramecia for nothing or best logia. Sorry, I keep getting mixed no, up. No, he but... has both. Yeah. Yes, he has both. Yes. He has the best Paramecia and the best Logia. And I think he's gonna get the best Zoan too. I do think that I've been hearing he he's Luffy's he's fruit? get the third double fruit. Oh, well, see, that's a thing. <laughs> that's a thing, dude. I'm curious what his third devil fruit is gonna be if he does get one. It's gonna be Marcos. You know? I hope. Oh I hope so. <laughs> oh. I hope so. Yeah. Or right. big big Buddha uh, Blackbeard up in the building oh, taking God. Sengoku. <laughs> oh God, Sengoku is yeah. too. All right, yeah. let's uh, let's let's try to get through these super chats, and then we'll talk about the Dragon Ball, and then we'll take a sponsorship break, and then we'll do the calls yeah. so people can like call up. Guys, we're gonna speed run some of these super chats, so sorry if we don't get have, have elongated answers. Um, but yeah, uh, we got another five from Larry Lover. It says, "Let's make a kid, Larry." Pause. <laughs> I really don't. You have ovaries? We got another five from Brent Kruger. It says, "So what's what what's uh, so with what's going on in Egghead? Do you think the giant robot will help Luffy take down Saturn? Also, love listening to you guys. Love you all. Uh, he should. It should. Whatever. Like it's gonna do something. Yeah. It's, it's gotta do something, right? Yeah, it has to do something. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've heard a theory that um." And I think this kind of goes in with Kuma's backstory is that there's power in the, the word Nika with sun god Nika. And I think the more people that believe in Luffy, that gives him more power. Mm. And so ultimately, I think, yes, there's going to be some sort of awakening with all this ancient technology because it's all powered by 
like the belief, like with dreams and all of that, the belief is what gives Luffy strength. I, I, I heard a great sort of analogy to this is that when Nami was screaming for Luffy back in Wano, that's when Luffy started waking up and mm. getting that gear five. So there's something there with the recognition or the power behind the name Sun God Nika. So I think for sure, for sure, we see the ancient yeah. technology come out. Probably even more so than that robot is my guess. You know, sometimes you just gotta believe in the Nika. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that you're saying that because it just remind me of kind of like what Vega Buck was saying, and I kind of it could hold true to what you're saying, as in like using the power because you know Vega Buck said the more people that believe, he will always exist. So kind of yes. like I guess you know you calling for, calling for him like to help liberate you or whatever is you putting belief in him you know and kind of keeping him around that he would always exist so yeah. interesting yeah. All right. yeah. another two from needles 25 it says watching old pods why is larry so mad <laughs> <laughs> it'd, of, be, you know, it'd be sebastian bro yeah, I, I, I don't even think it was me back then. i think it was wano back then wano used to get you mad yeah wano used to get you mad i wasn't bro. a big fan of week to week wano yeah Another five uh, Canadian dollars it, from yeah. Skylands. It says, Lawrence, Kid Goku was dodging lightning as a kid, and Roshi was moon level in OG Dragon Ball. Krillin took hits from Super Saiyan Blue Goku. It's not close. Krillin is him. Yeah, they won't uh, They won't agree, bro. I won't. So. won't. won't. <laughs> yeah. the, the other seven Canadian from uh, Joybringer, it says, Ginryusai Yamamoto from Bleach is stronger than Krillin and Ace. This is not a new person. It's just Barnes. Barnes! What's up, Barnes? What, what's also, happening? Also, that, that's Cap. He's wrong. I couldn't tell you. He's wrong. Couldn't tell you. But what up, Barnes? Another five from Lord Sneak. It says, y'all know that Master Roshi vaporized the moon in Dragon Ball and Krillin is way more powerful than Roshi. Yep. As I say on the pod all the time, keep, I say yeah, all the time. Just let it go, bro. Weak you're, ass move. You're already another what? two. A blast, from DJ. A blast breath will take care of that, bro. Yeah, another two from sure. DJ. It says rest in peace. That is all. We will get to the Dragon Ball discussion in a little bit. Another five from Ron Lewis. It says it's a lot to type with me and Lawrence Beef. Might have to go do a Discord call one day. I'll debate <laughs> this man into the ground. I'm tired of bad takes. Yeah, listen, Jeez. bro. <laughs> Good thing Lawrence doesn't know how to use Discord. <laughs> Another two from Kirby. It says, 1v1, I'm taking Tien over Krillin. Hashtag more experience. What? No. Yeah, bugging. Another two euros from Maxim. It says, favorite manga outside of One Piece. Hashtag read three days of happiness. I'll add it to the list. One Punch Man, Ooh. but I don't really read anything. Lex? Oh, bro. My my favorite anime uh, or manga of 2023 was Vinland Saga. Oh, that my God. I love Lex, bro. phenomenal. Yeah. Lex, Absolutely you're my guy, incredible. bro. You're my guy, oh. bro. 10 yeah. out of 10 show, legit. It was <laughs> Are you caught phenomenal. Up? Oh, bro. I, yeah, like, even just watching the anime, season two and season one, and with the manga, oh my, this peak, the storytelling is so good. Like, it's, I've waited for a real life type of anime like that. That's really trying to delve into real life type of history, but almost like, describe the, the, the exchange of power and what it does and what seeking this life by the sword is like. I don't know. Vinland mm. Saga was an unwelcomed anime that I didn't expect to be so amazing mm. in 2023. It was phenomenal. Kind of like yeah. must watch if you haven't. Yeah, Seriously. season one is good. Yeah. yeah. All right, next one. Another five from Roberto Figueroa. It says, hey guys, I hope you're having a wonderful night. Just popped in to say Krillin can KO Kaido. RIP Akira Toriyama. <laughs> <laughs> Another five from Obelisk. It says, hey guys, first super chat. I've been listening to the One Piece versus Naruto DDT, and it had me thinking of a match that hasn't been come hasn't come up yet. Usopp versus Ten Ten. <laughs> the battle, the, oh, the battle of the useless. <sighs> oh no. Out of respect, I'm going Ten Ten. Oh man. Honestly, I'm gonna go with Usopp. I think I'm going Ten Ten too. Ten Ten no, has. I'm, 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 Ten Ten has the two. Uh, she has the two Rikuru Sage's uh, urn yeah. and the feather, and the urn oh, can mm. just suck up Usopp at any time. He's gonna um, say something stupid. That's true. Uh, that's okay. true. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna go Ten Ten, bro. Usopp don't be winning. We got another. <laughs> I mean, she don't either. But we got another seven Canadian from Garbage D Fish. 
It says, Seb, where you got poutine from, just name the place is enough. <laughs> Hashtag poutine is good. <laughs> Hashtag Sanji gets slumped the again next chapter. Hashtag Huff Puff King Zoro. Hashtag Jimbei doing nothing. Oh, Jimbei getting shots down too. Uh, I got it from Wahlburgers. It's not a good like representation of poutine, I know, but it was still trash. Either way. Sorry. Sorry to my poutine lovers out no. there. Yeah, let's <laughs> talk about it after. <laughs> <laughs> we got another seven month membership to Nakama status from Mugiwara Waters. It says, Descendants of Sun Wukong unite with the praying hands. RIP Akira. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mugi. Another five from Mama Kid. It says, Who do you guys think w- wins in their prime? Every single emperor shown in One Piece versus every single Hokage shown in Naruto. Mm. Ooh. Well, that's unfair because that's like four versus like ten or how many is it now no. with Okage? So eight? I guess with the they're saying the Yonko versus the Yonko versus the Hokage specifically, not the Kage, the Hokage. So the first, the second, the third, fourth, fifth, etc. Like down to Naruto, yeah. I guess. I guess, even Shikamaru, I guess supposedly. You know it'll I mean? be the Hokages. And Hashi Rama was a freaking monster. Prime, so it'll be Whitebeard, Kaido, Shanks, Big Mom, Blackbeard. Luffy, I guess we're having Buggy. <laughs> no, don't count Buggy. Buggy <laughs> <There's no, laughs> yeah, not doing no anything. No, I would yeah. say if we could just go like the the previous old Gen Yonkos. But it's all of them, so you got to match oh. the numbers. Yeah, I mean. You know what I'm saying? Hashirama was different, bro. And plus. Well, Whitebeard different. Yo, yeah. but like <laughs> you know Hashirama was literally competing with Madara when he like had the Ninetale Fox. And that dude was slicing mountains in half easily. Like, people don't really understand how strong Hashirama was. Plus, he has, like, the plant effects where, like, he could put you to sleep or whatever. He could probably seal away hockey, bro. He has sealing techniques. You know what I'm saying? Sealing away hockey. Is and right. then you have Toby Rama, who's able to bring the undead to life at any point during the fight. And he could teleport. Plus, he also taught Hashirama how to do some sealing techniques. I think my And he's racist. I feel you. So I it's think, like... Why is that a power? I think the issue is, like, the tanking ability, bro. But then you they got, just don't... He has it. Yo, he can, like, regenerate his arms and stuff. I feel you, Most bro. of them, bro, yo, they get packed real quick. Yeah, and, like, Kaido is tanking almost anything they you, throw at them. Yo, you're not realizing, though, they also have Minato. And Minato is like a super genius. They need to use that water juice. You know what I'm saying? That's what they need. <laughs> so if it's not sea water. Spam. If it's not sea water. Y'all also forgetting, though, that that Kakashi became Hokage. And then Danzo became Hokage temporarily. And then we also have just Naruto, who's Hokage. Yo, but only like two of those people you named are conquerors. Yo, you get what I'm saying? When yo, everybody on this side is a conqueror. We also have like Luffy. Luffy, That's Luffy what I'm form. Saying. Yo, prime, yeah. we prime got two stop it, stop Luffy, it, stop prime it. Prime white beard. We know Luffy gassing out in like ten minutes. All right, we just gotta wait for that boy to gas out. He knocked right? most of them out, bro. Yo, y'all, y'all not understand. <laughs> Tsunade, <laughs> get put on. Word. Tsunade is also there to heal everybody anyway. Big Mom stack my soul. Big Mom could boost y'all up. And also, hold on, hold on. And also, they also have summonings. All of them have summonings that they could just summon. Gamabuta Yo, we should like, somebody we else. Should like, future site? Six conquerors this side. You talking about summonings, bro? Yo, it, it, the, <laughs> at, at worst case, at worst case, right? Naruto's probably just going to cloak all the Hokages anyway a... in the demon tailed fox forms, right? Which boosts all their APs and all their defensive stats because that's what happened when they were in the final war you, against the Jubilee. You're saying the teamwork will be better on the Kage side. Yo, it, it's it is. It's by far probably it's probably like mid diff. Okay. I'm not even joking. Okay. If Naruto I'm, wasn't there, it'd be a better shot. I, I just got to quote Kaido and say, uh, hockey conquers all. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going with the Yonko. Yeah, Yo, with but, the Yonko. Like, but put it this way, Lex. We could also say that chakra is a form of hockey because it's the will of the person manipulating their energy, which is just hockey anyway. If you want to correlate the two to be even... I guess, as as we know, they not though. I think yeah. their will, their will is too strong to be getting. Yo, like I'm that. telling you, yo, even even at worst case, right? Like even at worst case, they they all know the Death Reaper seal, so they just gonna kamikaze anyway. Like if it all comes down to it, why? Because I'm pretty sure none of them are fast enough to Minato speed, where he could just teleport right behind you and just seal you. 
and then it's over. Because Aru not top one. Last I checked. Yo, I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> I'm just saying. Because Aru not top y'all, one. Y'all really not thinking about it. All that speed stuff really is cool in Naruto. Really don't play about. like I think that white beard and shakes his really, future really, site. Yo, bro. It's, it's, white beard and shakes his future site, bro. It's not gonna go. Y'all really not thinking about, bro. Y'all really not thinking about it, bro. I'm telling you. All right. What I, I think Shanks everybody. takes on three Hokage is easy, bro. <laughs> Shanks, <laughs> like, no one's we getting close to Shanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, we got to move on. We got another two from Straw Hat Ronnie. It says, Larry, how your second language going? Oh, uh, it's learning Spanish. I, I suppose. I've been trying. Mm-hmm. You don't speak a little Spanish, but... Nah. Right. We got another... Duolingo! <laughs> Duolingo. <laughs> we got another... Uh, no, no, no free promo. Like, we got another two from Young Lou. It says, Usopp's Kabuto is getting a dub from calling it. Maybe. Maybe in uh, l Another five from Larry302. It says, Larry already flew in two languages. English and Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> That's so disrespectful. Uh, we got another five from Kirby. It says... Drake, Kendrick, and J. Cole, if they were in one piece, who would you who would and wouldn't have Conqueror's hockey? Hashtag Arlong is top five, hashtag Fishman Gang, hashtag Law is a Dilf. I don't think J. Cole would have it. Okay. Joe Cole J. Cole would have observation. Drake would have Conqueror's hockey for sure. I think Kendrick would have it for sure. I think they'd probably all have it, but I I think think Kendrick Kendrick would be the strongest. No, I think Kendrick would probably have um, armament hockey. That would be their specializations. I, I agree with the specialization. I do think they would all have Conqueror's hockey, though. They're like the top of the rap game, bro. Like, you know? I guess. Listen, yeah. rap game reflected in one piece. Check mm-hmm. it out. Mm-hmm. That's how you promo, Lex. No, I'm playing. <laughs> we got another five from Luffy Lank. It says, you just pl- downplayed that insanity insan- insan- as Toon Force that wouldn't clip anybody. I see why they say stuff like Sakura would one-shot Kaido shaking my head. <laughs> <laughs> nah, she definitely wouldn't. She would not. No, yeah, she, she wouldn't. wouldn't. We could all agree on that one. We got another uh, subscription to Nakama status from Namskin D. Nika. Uh, welcome and enjoy the emojis that come with being a Nakama. Another two from Cole. Lex uh, does Black Ops 3 Rich Ten Fen solos current Luffy? Uh, my answer is no. <laughs> I don't I don't know yeah. what that meant, but thank yeah. you, Lex. <laughs> yeah, guys, we have a couple more super chats right now and Just then we'll, to... we'll be finished. Yeah, and we'll get the calls. Uh we got another two from the Red Gamer 7. Now the Marco disc is crazy. I agree. Yeah. Another five from IG Top Peaton. Stop eating? <laughs> what? <laughs> who had uh, another five? It says who had a better reason to leave their family, Monkey D Dragon or Goku? Wow. Oof. They're both bad dads. There's never They're really not, a good reason yeah, to leave Luffy's your family. Not, Goku's not a bad dad. I would refuse to. I would say, that. who had the worst reasoning or who had the best reasoning? The who had a better reason? Better reason. It was Dragon. He's literally hunted throughout the world. Yeah. Goku just left because he was like, "Yo, people always coming after me, bro." And I'm trying to scrap more. And, so. and even when he wasn't there, they people came to Earth and tried no, to ruin it anyway. So. Listen. Yeah. I, no comment. We got another <laughs> 10 from Mick Dianos. It says, part one, got a theory for you guys. I think Conqueror's Hockey is toxic if you don't achieve your dream and is the reason Roger passed. Conqueror's Hockey is correlated to your ambition or dreams, dot, dot, dot. Part two, uh, if you can't achieve your dream, your Conqueror's becomes toxic, similar to the idea that people who don't achieve their dreams pass on the inside. Let me know what you guys think. Hashtag Marv answer my call. That is an interesting one. And I appreciate you separating it into parts. I would say that we saw the biggest result of people not living up to what they believed themselves to be was Gecko Moria. Mm-hmm. He just wasn't yeah. a conqueror. He wasn't a conqueror, but mm-hmm. it explained perfectly how a person's willpower can be dissipated over time. Because yeah. I'm pretty sure the Gecko Moria that Luffy fought wasn't the same Gecko Moria that Kaido fought. Right. And yeah. Yeah. Definitely yeah. not. No. I, well, he... he Sorry, even with Kaido, he doesn't have an awakened devil fruit, does he? Is, no, is that it's not yeah, confirmed so at all. He that, implied that he does, but he never showed us. So, so he yeah. might have just been holding back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, legit. I don't know. Yeah, I just want to add. Um, it's one thing interesting back when they talked about where uh, I think Oda revealed it, where I, Luffy doesn't like you know take out like permanently take out his enemies because he wants pretty much he wants them to live with the fact that. I stopped your dream or whatever. You did like kind of like they kind of show in the One Piece world. Damn, Luffy's toxic. <laughs> that the worst possible thing that happens is you don't achieve your your dream, right? And Luffy kind of like, all right, 
I kicked your butt, and now you have to live with the fact that your dream was ruined now. And then also, too, we have the whole thing where, like, if things all the road, if things go badly and things go good. Mm-hmm. If things don't go badly, how bad it looks for the people when things don't go well, you know? Yeah. And that could go into the same thing as you not achieving your dream and how that affects you. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. next one. Another two from Durantula33 says, don't hear this enough anymore. Bang, bang, buggy, gang. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, man. For sure. Bring it back. Another 10 from Ron Lewis. It says, this is an L take as evidence for why I'm on Lawrence's head. Devil fruits are a part of a character's strength. You can't just take it away from characters. That's like taking away swords from Zoro. Zoro would still be strong. He could yeah. use a tree branch and yep. do it just as, probably just as much damage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the one, yes, you combine with your ability, but hockey is separate from your ability, right? Yeah. Your ability, yeah, gives you a power up, but it's also your your own strength is you. You are not necessarily, because that ability, no matter what, you go someone else, it's still going to be strong. I mean, Zoro loses AP. He loses attack power for sure. Yeah. But ultimately, he's still super strong. Yeah, and even, like, yeah. the ability doesn't enhance you. Yeah. So if you're just relying on the ability's enhancement, you know, Kyle even said it perfectly. Hockey rules all Trump's all, and the reason why Gold Rod was able to do it because he didn't rely on ability, so to speak. He uses hockey. Yeah. So I think they're separate. Yeah. Yeah. Another two from Larry Lover. It says, who you got in a 1v1, Katakuri or King? I got King. Katakuri. Wait. Oh. Katakuri, King. I'm saying King because Lunarians are so unique and rare, and I think we don't even know the true extent of that race in the One Piece world yet. So I'm, I'm going with King. They're the closest honest. thing to hockey men because yeah. they're, they're black. <laughs> <laughs> Just to bring it back up. Think, Just to bring it back up. I think they're about even. I think all the YC yeah. ones are relative. But in no. in one-on-ones, give the edge to the dude with Cocker's hockey. I, only because like you... You just said hook? king, though. No, I said... They're relative. I think they're close in strength. When, in you, first, when you first answered it, you said Katakuri. I, I mean, would go King. King, yeah. But I said, in a 1v1, give the edge to do Conquerors. I can't show Katakuri love, bro. All right, whatever. <laughs> no, I, I favor um, King because he can't utilize that Conquerors into his attacks yet. And that's, I think he's going to need to take down Albert. Yeah. yeah. All right, next mm-hmm. one. We got another two from Diamond Life. It says, y'all think Aang or Zuko can teach Sabo some moves? Yeah, Ooh. for sure. I feel like he already like gets their entire skill set just from having the fruit. Yeah, but um, there's probably different ways to manipulate fire. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like they had the Azula was able to do the blue fire. Mm-hmm. She could probably teach Sabo how to do that. We got another two from Luffy Lank that says S Hawk can cut mountains. I don't, I don't know what that's in reference to, yeah. <laughs> but. I'm, he can. Yeah. We got another five from Larry302. I don't want to hear none of that Larry Hashirama a whole ace victim. That's crazy. Fire is greater than weak at wood. I mean, he versed a That's person wild. who specializes That's in wild. fire. That's wild. <laughs> like, Madara literally had a fire, fire specialty. And, and he won. No, he didn't. Say like Hashirama won. Yeah, Hashirama won. That's what I'm won. saying. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Anyway, number two from Larry Lover, Naruto alone solos Yonko. It's not even close. That's wild. Yeah, that's a wild take. That's wild take. Yeah, that's cap. That's yeah, cap. That's, that's big cap. Yeah. Uh, another yeah. 10 from Quacker Quake or Quacker Quack. Uh, it says, evening, gentlemen. Just wanted to ask, are there any moments you guys think the anime does a disservice to the source material? Cracker's latest showing comes to mind. Thank you all. Love from uh, Wisconsin. Uh, shout out to Wisconsin. One, I've never seen the episode where Sanji is fighting a shark, but that was a disservice. Just from that clip. Yeah, just from that yeah. clip. Like, the way he got thrown, that was crazy to see. The anime kind they, of be, a they be hoeing Sanji all There's the time. There's a lot of disservices. The Cracker one is the biggest one that comes to mind right now. Um, yeah, the Cracker one was crazy. That was just, it was a yeah. lot. And the, uh, the whole, we talked about Zoro using, revealing that he has Congress oh before Kaido. Yeah. To me, the reason why I say it's a disservice, it took away the writing aspect that Oda was putting into it in yeah. the manga. That having to show it to these... There was no reason for him to show it yeah, at that time. We went over it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lex, no. what you think since you watched the anime? I mean, honestly, my biggest thing is that uh, the major disservice really is just how the older One Piece episodes don't live up to 2024 quality. Which is why I'm really excited for the Wit Studio coming out like with this new sort of like really... Sh- uh, shortened down version of one piece coming to netflix yeah um i think that is going to be the way most people get into the show 
eventually. Like that is going to be huge for most people. Cause a lot of people I hear, they say, I can't get into it because when I watch the show, it's not high quality and it's not the same level of detailing that Oda put in the manga panels as it is on screen. Yeah. Right. And so that I think is the biggest disservice, but that's getting fixed. So hopefully, hopefully we get to see, I'm excited for that show, man. That is going to cook. Well, that's um, not I wholeheartedly disagree, bro. But <laughs> you we'll, you we'll, think we'll, we'll move on though. Yeah. <laughs> Dang, okay. <laughs> Old One Piece is better than New One Piece. I will say that till till I die as far as the right. uh, animation goes. But that's me. Uh we got another Nakama status subscription from Jake Tsar. Enjoy the emojis that come with becoming yeah. a Nakama. Thank you. And finally, another two from Luffy Length. It says that was for Larry glazing Madara cutting mountains. Oh yeah. Whatever. But that's all the Super Chats for now. Guys, like the stream if you haven't already. There's almost 500 people in here, but only 237 likes. Please like the stream. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't already, please go subscribe to t Lexify on YouTube. It's we love you guys. Yeah, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Thank you gaming. So before we get into the sponsorship, uh, I figured we'd talk a little bit about the Dragon Ball creator, Akira Toriyama. He ended up passing away. Uh, on March 1st. Uh, so basically, uh, I know that uh, Lex says, you know, he, he hasn't uh, watched or read Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z or even any of the Dragon Balls too much. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. I know that your community was reaching out on your, your videos that you post, you know, daily about him so uh yes would, yeah would you like to say anything in, in reference uh, absolutely to that? i honestly the experience i felt was very similar also to when uh the mangaka of berserk also passed away media it, i think his it, name was yes it just goes everywhere and i i see it as such a massive loss especially because this is dragon ball this is the, what created the shonen genre what really popularized it in my opinion and so when you have all these mangakas uh, from all these different animes that i personally watch all say that without a, him akira there would have been no there would have been no one piece there would have been no hunter x hunter there would have been no other good shows and so it's like you can't disrespect him bro this is not like a, a topic up to debate you know this is Something that you have to put respect on his name. And especially when I see on Twitter, man, of how apparently even like the Mexican cartel had a ceasefire because of his death. Like that, that shows something. That's respect right there, man. That is a huge, huge deal. And the impact that he put on the entire anime sphere is, especially Shonen, is second to none, literally. So... I mean, I, even though I haven't watched or read Dragon Ball, I can still attest to this impact regardless in just of all of media. And I mean, if you are a big fan of Dragon Ball, I know what it's like, especially losing incredible musicians as well. And it's it's the same feeling of just utter loss of like this crater that can never be filled in ever again. And so I think the impact on the industry is going to be immense from his loss. And I just hope that um, people still respect the source material, really, of Shonen, which is his work. He is he is the true pioneer. You've got to respect the pioneers, man. And and that's why, even though I haven't watched it, I I have such a respect for him and uh, any anyone who enjoyed his work, too. So just really sad. He's so young too, sixty-eight, man. Yeah, that's 68. not that old. Yeah, that's not that old, you know. So, just really, really sad. And I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a part of life, man. And I think it's really cool, also, when a lot of these mangakas in their stories talk about death and they talk about uh, what happens after death and how they, they their will lives on it's kind of like even in one piece you know sure gold roger's dead but look at his impact in that story right it's the same thing with our world with akira that his impact will live on for generations and generations and generations so i mean what a goat really the goat so just yeah. sad just sad well said man uh, yeah. Law? uh can you read the question just how you feel about the passing of Toriyama, the creator of Dragon Ball? It caught me completely off guard. Uh, I, I don't pick track of all that, so I don't know how old he was. But again, like you said, 68 is not that old. Like, uh, you know, yep. you still 
left to do a lot of things. And um, it just takes me back to, like, again, you know, I'm not sure it was the first and no, because I guess technically Pokemon, but really got it because I didn't watch follow Pokemon like that. But you know, Dragon Ball is the one that introduced us really into that style of or anime like that. You know, and to this day, I've I think me and Lana have always favored Dragon Ball. Like Kid Goku, we liked better than Adult Goku. I don't know why he seemed freer. He seemed I don't know. Is I guess, and that's where I think um, Luffy. Not necessarily is based off Kid Goku, but I see more comparison with Luffy and kid Goku than adult Goku and then now even in Super it seemed like Goku kind of went back to how he was more like the how he was in you know kid uh, as kid Goku because if you try to check Dragon Ball Z Goku he was way more serious you know he wasn't as he was as kid where he was just I'm an adventurer stuff like that he had a little, a little bit of playful, playfulness to him but he was a lot more serious especially you know in Super Saiyan mode but yeah that was an introduction to me where I just opened up the anime world to me more fully in that way and honestly I do appreciate his work because you know I remember back in the basement how we would be drawing the Dragon Ball Z pictures <laughs> no. I've never probably drawn more any more anime pictures than Dragon Ball Z in my entire life That's like right. as in at all the animes I didn't draw One Piece or Naruto or anything like that it was mostly Dragon Ball Z pictures. I would try to copy that style when I was drawing myself. So I've always liked the, uh, I don't know, I just drew, Dragon Ball Z just drew you into it, like with the, the combat style and the power and what you wanted to do. I wasn't one of those people that was like, you know, yelling out trying to become Super Saiyan though. But <laughs> if I could, I would. If I could be one to turn Super Saiyan, I would oh, definitely man. choose that. But I wasn't like, I'm going to turn it, you know. But uh, I've, everyone wanted to turn Super Saiyan. So appreciated that. Yeah. You know what he did. All right, Seb. Oh, man. Um, I was shocked hearing about it. We were doing a, a Discord uh, event versus, and we got the message. And mm -hmm. I I completely, like, stopped paying attention to the verses. All I did was spam Dragon Ball Z gifts in our general chat. Uh, it's, it's, it's crazy how impactful a person can be, how influential a person can be. We're not sitting here today doing this if it's not for Dragon Ball Z. Not yeah. for yeah. us not watching that. Man. Yeah, yeah, if it's not for him. And the creativity, the mind, the story, the, the powers, everything. Like, I still get into Dragon Ball debates today, as you can see on this podcast, with people that are generations removed from it, mm -hmm. that care as passionately as I did when I was a kid. That's insane. Like, people who are teenagers will argue with me about Dragon Ball Z. And I'm like, can you imagine that? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm 30. You know what I mean? Like Damn. it's it's, <laughs> no, <laughs> it's it's crazy, and it goes beyond. It, it, it's Dragon Ball so it was so good and so impactful. It goes beyond just generations, right? Like cultures, mm. right? Like people I knew of various cultures knew they know who Goku is. They know what it is. They can have a conversation with you about Dragon Ball Z. Like in our chat, we have Spanish people, we have Black people, we have all these people. They all watch Dragon Ball. You yeah. know what I mean? It was able to bridge that gap that I think people had at that time or even just throughout the years. And it's crazy when you see it, man. It's crazy. It's it's insane. Like, I never thought, I never, like, thought about him passing. Yeah. Like, I never thought it would it could happen. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then it did. Like, I don't, I don't even watch Super. It made me want to go watch it, you know, to pay my respects. But... Overall, man, he's he was truly the godfather of manga, um, and anyone who says otherwise is absolutely insane. Yeah, so. I, you know I agree with you because there's no other Im anime that's had the same impact. Because like, sure, okay, with One Piece they'll put up like straw hat statues in Japan, but it's like, man, I went to Mexico exactly. and I see trucks with Goku's face on it, and I'm like, <laughs> what the heck? It, that's crazy, bro. Thirty that's years, else. thirty years removed from like when it was yeah. airing, you know? Insane. Nobody's moving like that, Nobody. bro. Nobody moved like he did, bro. Nobody. It was it was really something else. So I mean, yeah, it it is. It, it gives you that impression that he literally is invincible. That like he could never die, you know. And and here we are right it's it, it's impactful but it goes to show man that no matter what we are we are not as invincible as we think we are and uh we just got to put up the good fight you know so yeah respect utter respect and towards his family i can't even imagine Absolutely. what they're feeling right now well, anything else that's it for me man rp to go yeah uh when i first got introduced to dragon ball z um 
I started out watching the Boo Saga. Literally right after uh, Vegeta and Goku fought. That That's was the insane. first time I've ever seen Dragon Ball. That's insane. Uh, so wow. I caught it at the very end. <laughs> That's insane. And ever since then, it was a weird transition because, like you said, like Pokemon was huge. Uh, it wasn't necessarily considered an anime, yeah. but <laughs> it did give us the anime uh, that we needed, right? And then you started seeing more on Cartoon Network. Mm -hmm. And right. I remember, you know, in Yu Yasha, uh, Yu Yu Hakusho, you, you had, you know, Dragon Ball Z. Roni Kenshin. Yeah, and then Dragon Ball Z, when I started watching it, and it was on Cartoon Network, it was when Gohan was exploding on Frieza in his second form on Planet Namek. Paul. Mm. Yeah, that was a pause. That was a pause. <laughs> so hey, yo. there was a there was a time where I was like so excited that even I started to draw. And then that's when I started going into anime a lot more. And then when I heard that Dragon Ball Z, when it got shown to us in America, it already finished in 1989. Mm -hmm. Because okay. in 1989, they were already showing Dragon Ball GT. Mm -hmm. That's when Dragon Ball GT was actually airing. That's crazy. Yeah, so like all of it finished around 1990, 1989. So I thought to myself, I was like, man, we have this One Piece podcast. We have other animes out there. But I was like, if One Piece was to stop right now, like legitimately just stop. Like Luffy defeats the girl, say on Egghead, story is over, whatever. Does it stand the test of time the same way that Dragon Ball does? And it made me think to myself, and I honestly said, no. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Like, too. as great yeah. as America? One Piece is, no. as great as One Piece is, as great as One Piece had the ability to be um, given the uh, promotion to reach the masses because of better technology and because now Japan is so much more open to letting people just receive their 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 culture like drawings or their their culture entertainment, they weren't like that much back then either. So. For people, like, Dragon Ball was shown in DR on, like, Telemundo, mm -hmm. you know? It was, like, a lot of Spanish people connect to it because they know, like, they this is what they, this was their cartoon. But it, it, it is so amazing to think that one person had this idea, created this idea, and it lasts them forever. I don't think I've ever seen so much fan animation from any other genre of entertainment that's not Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball fans happen to create such fan animations that I wish some of them were true mm -hmm. because they're so damn good. Yeah. And it's crazy because even now, and Lex could probably testify because he's a YouTuber. He's been one for 11 years now, right? Even now, people started YouTube channels around Dragon Ball like two, three years ago, and they've exploded, created careers yeah. out of it. Like it's literally made people a living just talking about it. And again, this ended 30 years ago. Like, it's it's such a, a blessing to live in a time period where we could receive art and genuinely just enjoy it, but it has such a cultural impact. So I started to think to myself, too, what does Akira's passing feel like? Yo, it kind of feel like Kobe Bryant's. Yeah. Wow. Like, yeah. I felt Kobe Bryant's, like, uh, like iconic energy like i felt like when when like he didn't show his face too much but like if people if you said yo this is the creator of dragon ball you would get like that kobe feeling and not only that behind the scenes he was helping other mangekas mm -hmm. like flourish like the person who created bleach kubo he got denied at first and then akira apparently you know put in some word with shonen he got his manga after that serialized mm. and it became what a top three at one point so it's like every character that has ever been introduced into anime after Goku has only been like Goku. Right. And I'm not a Goku fan too much because I'm more of a G Vegeta type of guy. But it's like, bruh, I, it's undeniable that this is the greatest character probably in fiction that we've seen. But so they, he ranks up there with like Mickey Mouse, Super Saiyan, Batman. Uh, like there's so much. And then we got the transformations. Yeah, bro. Listen, can which, can he beat Goku still exists? Yo, exactly. It's, it still exists. Everybody always goes, yo, can he beat Goku? Like, th this is like a, th this is like, again, when you shoot the ball into the garbage can. Kobe. You yell Kobe. Yeah. It's very, very similar. True. So, yeah. 
I I just I just want to say like I'm super grateful and super thankful that I've been able to enjoy a person's work. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it's only had positivity. Remember when uh, Dragon Ball Super was airing? The first time I think Crunchyroll ever like went down was because Goku was fighting Jiren. And they right. had and and people people who didn't have Crunchyroll or they didn't, mm-hmm. they went into plazas or like a parking lot and someone had a projector and they were watching Goku yeah. fight Jiren. Yeah. Yo, this is like yeah. years after Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball GT ended. Dude, I hadn't watched a single episode of Super. I was like, oh, I gotta link up for this party to watch. Oh Goku my god. Jared, I had to. Yo, I get so hyped thinking about it because I'm like, yo, it's so nice to see people get that excited. Yeah. It's so nice to see people. Everybody, we have our differences, right? But what do they say about sports? It brings people together. Mm-hmm. Yo, Dragon Ball brought people together. Sorry. Yeah. I would, I would say just like and the uh, add to what you're saying, you know, like for I guess in America you could kind of say like Goku is Japan's like Superman. Yeah, they would always yeah. have the battle between who's stronger between Goku and Superman. He can't be you know? Goku. Uh, and, um, <laughs> and also too, like you know, without, without how we when Stan Lee passed, you know, mm-hmm. yo, like Dragon Ball Z. Yo, he's very here, much the West. Yeah, is, he's the West. Yeah, Stan Lee. Lee. Stan Lee. Yeah, yeah. Which like it's crazy, bro. And it's like, yo, that's the that's the type of like. I, I sometimes people be like, yo, sometimes like. There, we don't have great figures. Like, a lot of it's probably, like, watered down compared to, like, history's greats. Yo, mm-hmm. we have some great greats, bro. Yeah. And it's sad yeah. that, like, he passed away from something that ultimately he didn't have any control over. Yeah. So, listen, man, I I love Dragon Ball. I, I never watched Dragon Ball itself, but I've watched Dragon Ball Z and everything afterwards. So I'm looking forward to like watching Dragon Ball. Watch Dragon, Dragon Ball, Ball is you would love it because yes. it's funny. Yeah, yeah. it's That's funny. The thing. It's, it's so fi- funny, dude. It is fire and Brooke and Master Roshi are like the same person. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're like the same. No, person. I do know that. I do know that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go about Dragon Ball, so, man. Like it, like it, like it made me wish like I could collect Dragon Balls, and it made me think like. If I was to wish for one wish, what would I wish for? Mm. Like, I never thought about, like, you know, like, you watched, you know, the genie from, you know, Disney, right? Yeah. With Aladdin. Mm. Yeah. And it's like, all right, I had three wishes. But it's like, yo, if I collected three, dra- if I collected the Dragon Balls, who would I revive? Mm. If I got it, would I go for the riches? Would I do this? Would I become more powerful? My would wish- I solve world hunger? Like, it made me think in those aspects. And I never thought about it. I was just like, yo, I don't think it like that. But it, it brought the, the realization of, what would you do if this happened to you? Mm-hmm. Like when Gohan was first teaching Videl how to manipulate Ki mm-hmm. because she didn't know how to manipulate it. Yo, there was a point where I was like, yo, yes. can I do this too? That, yeah. <laughs> That's what I was thing. like. Yeah. I was like, yo, can I do this? That's when they, I was like trying. I was like, yo, I got this, yo. I think everyone, the same way if you try to go Super Saiyan, the people were like, hold on, all right, from the stomach, he said. Yeah, yeah, from the stomach, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Do I need some loss in my life? Yeah, I'm tripping. <laughs> Have y'all ever, y'all really was trying, yo? Thank you. Yo, when, he, yo, when y'all, Gohan bro? explained it to Videl, yes. I was like, yo, I was young. But, but what I will say too, right, is that it brought in the best aspects of fiction. Flying. Teleporting, mm. being Sh- able to sh- be strong, shooting beams out your hands. Yeah, <laughs> everyone wanted to ride that minimus, bro. Yo, yo, there was just something about like a sensu bean for people that are sickly. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe the sensu bean could have helped From them in their life. Corp. Yo, yo, capsule corp technology. If I could create capsule corp today, I would. That would oh. be my wish. <laughs> create capsule corp. Capsule Dude, corp. It, that would change everybody's life forever. Yes. No parking. Just off that. Just think about that. You don't have to worry about parking. Yo. Lex, Ca- Capsule Corp is like a corporation where they made capsules that can like encapsulate anything that they can create inside them. So you could like oh, click okay. a button and throw like a little like capsule and you'll yeah. spawn a house. You'll spawn a oh, car. You'll yeah. spawn whatever. Okay. Like it's it's basically Vegapunk before Vegapunk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're like, yo, it's, it's, yo, I'm serious. Yo, I'm going to be real too. Yo, he might have created the best waifu of all time with Bulma. Millionaire, billionaire. Yeah. No, no. I'm just talking about across the land, anime wise. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. Like everybody wanted Bulma. 
And then Yamcha fumbled the bag. And we was just like, what? Yeah. How'd you fumble? <laughs> Because Bulma was that girl. Yeah. Like, Bulma was the chick that... Every, she was like, boy crazy, though. I will say that. She was a little she was, she was a little she boy, was super crazy. boy crazy. It didn't matter, bro. DB Bulma was boy crazy. Yo, they had me die. They wow. had me die when they brought up in Super. When uh, Goku did, like didn't show up to like her uh, birthday or whatever, whatever mm-hmm. and she goes, she says to Gohan, you don't understand how long I've known your father. <laughs> right? Because like, in Dragon Ball, that's the first person... Yeah. Human that Goku, I mean, it's from Grandpa Gohan, but like the first person that Gohan, I mean, Goku meets and hangs out with, comes a friend with, is listen, Boma. Listen, bro. Yeah. I, I tapped it. I, I think, I think what's crazier is it's like everything gets amplified in, uh, in death, mm-hmm. right? Like everybody's achievements, everybody's, uh, values, they just get amplified. And I, I truly hope that Akira Toriyama. Even though it might have caused legal issues because people kept like trying to remake his stuff or like, mm-hmm. and I hope he felt like his flowers were given. Yeah, I really do, bro. Cause one, he he didn't make as much money as like Oda or Kubo, but I hope when he did make the money that he did make, it was enough for him to never have to worry about money. Like the number didn't matter. It was just his lifestyle, like how he lived, was enough for him. Yeah. Yeah. Just, he, I also think it's important because, you know, a lot of artists back in the day, people didn't celebrate their achievements until hundreds of years after their death. Right we now. get to at least celebrate it only a week after it was announced that he, he died because they, they waited about a week. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, I mean, that that is a gift. People have to see that's a gift. We didn't have that. Damn, yeah, bro. True. Shout out to Toriyama, bro. Bro. RP, man. It's one of the best to ever do it. Yeah, Godfather but of uh, guys, before we read some super chats and before we get into the phone calls, because we're going to take phone calls, we're going to do a quick sponsorship break. So Lex could get signed a drink. Guys can get up and use the bathroom. So Marv can like step out if he needs to. So, and so y'all can get better help. Yeah. So listen, guys, like the video. If you haven't subscribed to Lex just yet, please click the blue name right now in the video title. Follow him oh, right God, now. Follow, crazy. follow, follow, subscribe. <laughs> and uh, also, if you haven't liked the Spotify and given us five stars or the Apple podcast, please do that and leave a nice comment. But we'll be right back. All right. <laughs> All right. That's my fault. That's yeah. my fault. That's my fault. You should have just hold, held it. Bro. I had to go, bro. I had to you go. You got everybody bro. think like something happened to I us. I had bro. to go, man. <laughs> my bad, Lex. Everybody, my oh, bad. No, no, we, it's all good. Yeah, two people had to use the bathroom. Marv stepped away. <laughs> Listen, is it usually this long? I, if I would have went behind the computer, something would have broke. Like, I'm good. But anyway, uh, 
Uh, let's read these super chats, yep. and then we're gonna start taking phone calls, guys. We'll have an extra hour because we're gonna be here until nine. Okay. Yep. Listen, Lex, if you if you need to ever just go, let me know. Okay. No, I'm gonna stay all the way. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's I, do it. I need my one piece talk. <laughs> all right, uh, we got another five from NSF Hammer. It says Luffy's Del Fruit is actively removing his freedom. Do you think he will lose his Del Fruit to Blackbeard and become a dedicated hockey man? Hashtag Zoro is a fraud. What is good with the Zoro hate today? No, I, I'm no. gonna say no. No, I don't think so. It'll be taken away in the sense that he has to use hockey to defeat Blackbeard, but he'll never lose the Devil Fruit over, nah, like, completely. Yeah. I think that's part of the, the dream. I, I, I think there's a lot of tie-ins to gigantification. That's, like, the huge theme in New World. And I think that Luffy's Devil Fruit is really going to be... Like, I have a theory that he's going to become the giant as big as, like, Zunisha and literally punch the red line and break the separation between the worlds. And so it's, like... That is what I think the ultimate purpose of his devil fruit is. Is I mean, like Oda saving the giants for Elbaf. There's something we don't know, you know. And so I think, yeah, it will ultimately be down to hockey. But I think that the devil fruit is more of just like a tool for hockey now, which I think is fine. I think that serves its purpose. You yeah, know? for sure. All right. All right. We got another subscription to Nakama status from Brett Kruger. Uh, welcome and enjoy the emojis that come with being a Nakama. Another two from David Stenson. It says, which straw hat achieves their dream first? Ooh. That's a good question. Luffy. Mm. It seemed like it's going to be Luffy. But strangely enough, I kind of feel like when Luffy achieves his dream, San others achieve their dream right along with it, like Robin and Frankie. Sanji's... I assume, oh, this is the all blue creation also, after, right? Could yeah, be. Could be. Bro uh. Brooks will be last because he has to reunite with Laboon at the very end of the new world. Yeah. And so that is presu presumptually after Laugh Tale, mm. right? So it's, yeah, I would say he's last. It's good. Not just, it's Nami and Chopper are going to be last too. Way too many right. like illnesses in the world to you cheap all that. And then the map of the world, you got to go to like every single area. Usopp already achieving his dream right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's first. Brave warrior. Usopp's real dream is smashing Kaya. Dude, I put that on God, bro. <laughs> Kaya waiting back at home for him, bro. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> Did he say what gym base was? No, we didn't get there. He just he's, wants he's people to stop being racist, bro. Yeah. Pretty much, so, yeah. Man. He just wants it's to It's so that humans and fish the... can live in peace. He's, he's actually yeah. living his dream, too, right now. Yeah. <laughs> Another five Canadian from Braden White. It says, I agree with Seb on the old animation style. I would love to see the old look with better pacing. Hashtag Seb has good takes. Yeah, there's something special about the old look. Thank but, you. like, how old? Like, you talking yeah. about first episode look or, like, you know? Nah, it was like during that Whiskey and, Peak, during Ennis Lobby. Ennis Lobby, Lobby okay, yeah, era, yeah. 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 Saba Odi, yeah, yeah. Archipelago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was the good times. Another uh, three month membership to. Shiji Bukai status from JD Cervantes. It says, RIP to the GOAT. Got introduced to Dragon Ball Z by the PlayStation games Budokai Tenkaichi 2, specifically one of my fondest childhood memories. A truly sad time with a dove. We used to rock Budokai all day, bro. Budokai yeah. was crazy. The yeah. deep struggles, man. Yo, yeah, the Budokai 3. <laughs> Budokai 3 was, was the yeah. greatest one. Budokai 2, fighting mm -hmm. kid. Oh my a God. kid boo was God. the hardest thing in the freaking world. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Another 50 from our guy Stride. Stride with the 50. <laughs> it says, I'm upset. 50,000 on my head. RIP to the GOAT who led me to greatness. Thankful for the understanding. Thankful for Akira and his ability to know me across cultures. RIP to an OG. RIP to Toriyama Sensei. I hope you know how much we loved you. Absolutely, man. Thank you and perfectly said, Stride. RIP. Thank you, Stradi. Thank, thank, thank you for the 50. Another five from our guy Joe Jones uh, of My Life with, An uh, was Life with Anime Podcast. Life with Anime Podcast. Yeah, man. Uh, it says, yo, hope y'all boys are well. Hashtag can he beat Goku, though. <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> Sailor Moon beats Goku. <laughs> Hashtag RIP Toriyama the GOAT. Hashtag put some respect on Krillin Sev. Hashtag Krillin beats Kaido. Hashtag... <laughs> Vegeta is the MVP. Uh, I'm not going <laughs> to slander any Dragon Ball characters The boy characters Joey today. Jones. What's up, brother? <laughs> Another two from Hio. It says, Cartels apparently had a truce during Goku versus Jiren. I heard that. Yeah, Lex said it. Yeah. yeah. Man. yeah. yeah Lex crazy. was there. Crazy. He said, no, was it? He said, the closest <laughs> clear, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks, Toriyama. 
we out. Yeah. Another 50, I don't know what that is, but from Lucky Noble, it says, I see the vision, Larry to cosplay Master Roshi. I think that'd be good cosplay for you. <laughs> that's disrespectful, bro. What you mean? You're calling me old, bro. Not just bald. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I am bald. And perverted. We got another two from what? Juicebox. I am not perverted. I am well-mannered. We got another two <laughs> from Juicebox5968. It says, Akira Toriyama was an inspiration to all of us and continued. Another two, it says, but Rimu Tempest could mob Koku prove me wrong. <laughs> I don't even know who that is. Yeah, I feel like I do. I just don't remember the, who it is based off the name. Oh, I deleted the comment. I should have. Anyway. We got another two from PB McGee. It says Magellan's top five. <laughs> so random. Wow. That's one character that's overrated. I don't think Magellan's overrated. You don't, you don't hear about him ever. Yo. But when you do, it's stuff like this. Yeah. <laughs> that's what's crazy. Yeah. Another five from Brute Ninja. It says, birthday was this past weekend, and I was so excited to see Lex on this pod, and this is my first Super Chat. Finally caught up to you guys. Hashtag Buggy Gang. Glad we could make a birthday. Just, just yeah, a little bro. bit more special with Lex on, Let's man. Let's go. And another 10 from Truly Certified. It's just, it says, just wanted to say Lawrence is the GOAT. I always love his takes. They're always the best and thank y'all for making my Mondays enjoyable love you guys Glazer yeah. thank, thank you appreciate that don't come <laughs> at me don't come at people who appreciate me and Mark bro. oh man no, you just appreciate I'm not the GOAT though but I appreciate the love and thank you when my name come up <laughs> <laughs> that's disrespectful oh man Mars. that's all super chat for now alright uh, guys listen this is gonna be the phone call portion so Marv, if you can, or Seb, please put the phone number um, in live chat and pin it. You know I know how to do that. That way uh, you guys can start calling up. Also, Lex, you'll be able to hear everything as well. So, Marv, Let's let go. me know if there's any audio issues, and I'll just let them guys know, okay? Yeah? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> hey, what's going on? This is Larry from That One Piece Talk. Who are you, and how are you? Uh, he hung up. Oh, he hung uh, up? Uh, yeah, Lex, uh, let me know if you can hear them, too. Like, give me a thumbs yeah, up. Yeah, no, I, I hear it all. Yeah, I hear the... Hey, what's going on? This is Larry from that One Piece talk. Who are you and how are you? I think they hung up, too. Oh. No. Hello? Hey, yo, this is Anthony. Hey, what's up, man? How's it going? Chilling, chilling. <laughs> oh, I was to share on RP. Yeah. To the Godfather go, because that's my older brother's... Uh, First anime, so kind of hit me home. Call my brother up, but I had to pull one up for one. I had to pull one up. Mm. But um, overall, I have a I have a question. Wait, are you the guy that to... dropped his chicken wing on the floor? Yo. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yo, I, yo, I I knew it was you, bro. I knew it was you because I heard the cherry creak. <laughs> hey. All right. All right my, 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 my. Nah, you're good. You're good. My All bad right. for cutting you off. Go. <laughs> no, that was funny as hell. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, right. So, I was watching a previous episode, 133 uh, specific. Um, Larry, I, I do like, I like your idea when of a Blackbeard murking Dragon. I don't remember having that combo with Lawrence. Yeah. Okay. Um, I see that happening, but uh, and and my vision is I believe that um when Dragon's gonna get ready to fight Blackbeard, I feel like Sabo is gonna come in the picture somehow, right? So I was gonna come in the picture because um oh, sorry, I'm sorry I'm going I'm I'm, everywhere, I'm sorry, but I was gonna come in the picture and we will see Sabo versus Blackbeard, and we will see Luffy have a greater anger towards blackbeard and see his father his, see his father dragon seeing his true colors of being a revolutionary leader and not fighting blackbeard but instead he trusts sabo to fight and defeat blackbeard but instead blackbeard will take the edge over sabo i did so uh, blackbeard I takes out sabo yes because because i i'd be seeing everyone saying that dragon is going to come and I, which I do believe Dragon might come, but I feel like he's gonna step back. And when Sabo comes in the picture, because he he knows where Egghead is, he pointed to he he saw Bonnie and like, hey, you know, Egghead's right over there. 
and then he's gonna pass the information to Dragon, and um, we're gonna see that Dragon's gonna get ready to fight Blackbeard because, um, you know, he's just he's just gonna get ready, whether whether it be an egg cut or not. I just see that Blackbeard's gonna take out Sabo instead of, and he's gonna try to take his Mary Mary fruit, and that will be his third fruit. All right, Lex, you wanna comment? I, I do subscribe to that theory of Blackbeard is going to take out someone close to Luffy because that is something that Akainu has done as well. And that's what Oda is doing to set up those villains. I don't know if Oda would just do the same thing with Sabo, though, as he did with Ace, where Ace would then die to Blackbeard. I guess it would make sense. I don't like the idea of Sabo dying to Akainu, though. I'm not a fan of that. I think that... right. It would just be the same thing as Ace. So I, I, I totally get what you're saying. I, I don't know if, um, I don't know if Blackbeard would have the the Mare Maranomi as the third fruit. So many people think it's a Zoan because he's got the Paramecia, he's got the Logia. Would he need another Logia that he knows is already weaker than the Yami Yami no Mi? I don't know, right? Um, but I. I don't know what Sabo's role in the story is quite yet. I think that's what's so fascinating because I don't think he's another ace. I think he has some more up his sleeve. And I think current day Sabo is stronger than what ace was when he was up against the Kainu. But yeah, I, I know Sabo's role is going to be huge. I mean, Oda's setting it up. He's like mm -hmm. basically this icon, just like how Luffy is in the world now. So I, I don't know if mm -hmm. it's going to be with Blackbeard though. Right? I have no clue. And, and, I don't know. I'm sorry, go on. No, what, I have what no I, clue. What I also, yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, what I, cause what, uh, Larry was saying that, uh, that, you know, hypothetically that dragon might have a god fruit. We don't know yet. But I feel like, again, Blackbeard's gonna try to go for dragon because he tried to go for him that one time. And he has to know something about dragon and when when it's time for them, Dragon and Blackbeard to like yeah meet up, uh you know Sabo's gonna trying to be that number two higher emperor, and then he's gonna be like I got this pops, let me handle this, and then we'll 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 just see we'll go from there because again I I like Sabo but yeah 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 I, 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 I yeah Listen, I, I'm, I personally. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm down for it for Sabo to go. I, I don't envision it being Blackbeard that does it personally. Mm -hmm. I just don't think oh. we net enough for that, and I don't think Blackbeard would still target the fruit for himself. It would have been something he would have given to one of his underlings, and they seem to all be double fruited out at this point. Yeah. So I, I don't think, I don't think, the Blackbeard pirates and the revolutionaries have another clash like they already had their little mini clash and Sabo was a part of one on Dressrosa and then they had their clash on uh what was it Baltigo no they didn't was clash where on was Baltigo where, no, where was the island okay. whatever island that their base used to be at the revolutionaries they the Baltigo yeah well they, they had a little clash no they didn't they the had a Blackbeard cl pirates and the revolutionaries had a clash no, no? they didn't bro they clashed with C oh. uh, cypherpole agents they Am showed I up. Tripping? They showed yeah. up and they weren't there. Remember? They they left. Yeah. And then the Black Bear pirates intercepted the Cypherpole agents because mm -hmm. they also found out, mm -hmm. and then they clashed. Yeah, because the the, the okay. revolution but they couldn't never have their yeah. base being revealed to the yeah, world. Yeah, and so they, they never left. said it was okay. CP zero. Either way, it doesn't seem as though the pirate situation is what the revolutionaries are focused on. Sabo would maybe in this situation go after Blackbeard a little bit, but like that's just not their focus, and I don't think that they're yeah. being written to clash again in any meaningful way. Yeah. And that's I, me. I, yeah. I, I think Oda is actually also setting up something with Shanks too, because Shanks has the scar from Blackbeard. Yeah. I think that has to be resolved. But then I'm not going to lie. I thought there was going to be some resolution for Gecko Moria's storyline in Wano with Kaido, and he didn't appear. He just got captured on uh, by Blackbeard's crew. So I don't know. I, I have no clue. Mm. No. But yo, we but... have a thing saying <laughs> Yo, but brother, yeah. thank you so much for calling up, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, and also, three episodes with no calls is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yo, we were having issues, bro. I can't give you bad. I can't give you bad quality entertainment. Thank you for your patience. Thank you bro. for letting us slide, bro. Appreciate mm -hmm. you. <laughs> 
good. All right. No, I'll let you guys go. All right. Have a good Thanks, one, bro. Yeah. All right. You peace. Too. Yeah, that was, that was the longest we ever gone without calls. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Hey, what's going on? This is Liar from That One Piece Talk. Who are you and how are you? Yes, finally. Finally. Bro, oh, my God. Bro, bro, bro. What's, what's going on, What's bro? going on, bro? Broker, I'm sorry, bro. I can't, I, I, I can't oh, say yeah. anything else, bro. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. So, because it's been so long, I've just got to run through a few points. It's really quick. Right. Okay. So I know you guys have been harping on the fact that how evil like the Gurusei are and stuff like that. But the Gurusei are not the most evil people in the world. We know who the most evil people are, don't we? Who? It's Celtic fat. <laughs> <laughs> Celtic. What did you say? Celtic, 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 Celtic oh fans are just pure evil. Pure evil. There's no, re <laughs> there's no redeeming features to a Celtic oh fan. No. I was not expecting I that. I was not expecting that at all. I love it. <laughs> I was legit curious. Uh, Who's more two, evil? Number two, number two, Blackbeard wasn't using Conqueror's Heart. He neither was law, so we can skip right past that. <laughs> that's all nonsense. Um, people, people, go, people keep going on that um, Blackbeard starring Shanks means that Blackbeard is as strong as Shanks. If you believe that, then you have to believe that Zoro is as strong as Kaido, because <laughs> Zoro scarred Kaido. So that's all nonsense as well. Mm. Right. Right. So going back to things. So Larry, yes. I was rewatching old videos, and um, one of yours that really hit me was one where you mentioned what a Logia awakening is, and you mentioned that the um, the light that is um, around Eni's lobby is the effect of Saturn using his awakening to have like eternal light be in that area. Yes. And, and uh, um, I think the other time we actually see this, the first person is Karasu, the, um, the, the crow guy from the um, Revolutionary Army. Yes, sir. Because what he manages to do is physically be able to separate himself into lots of different crows, but be able to talk via both of them at the same time. So I, I think what loads your awakening is, it's the ability to separate a part of yourself off and be able to cr control that part of yourself remotely. So um, I, I think that the other times we see this is when we see like a Kainu make a giant dog out of magma. I think that it's just another version of that awakening. And the person that can use it most effectively is Kizaru, because Kizaru can physically make multiple versions of himself using his life ability. And the, the way I, so you guys have been saying for a while now that you think, the same as me, that um, Kizaru has been holding back when he's been fighting Luffy on Egghead. And I think that the main reason for that really is the fact that otherwise it just shows that admirals are apparently not all that. Like we, we saw Luffy have to go really all out in order to damage Kaido. And yet Luffy's been able to knock Kizaru to the ground three times now with not a particularly large amount of effort. So I, I really, really hope that Cesaro has been holding back, hoping that if he at least holds back, it gives more time for Vegapunk and Sentimaru to escape without him being, like, directly disobeying orders. Broker, are you but, implying that the Cesaro we see is actually just a light clone? No, no, well, I'd say that, that could be part of it. But okay. what I'm say, more saying is the fact that the strength we have seen Cesaro use on Egghead just isn't all that impressive. Like, nothing about Kizaru showing has been... I wouldn't even put him at, like, commander level at this point. I really wouldn't. Yes, he's used some decent abilities, but in terms of, like, the, the people he's been able to put down, like, Frankie took a kick from Kizaru and got up fine. Like, like it was nothing. We don't see him, like, you know, having to recover or anything like that. He gets kicked and he gets up again. So I, I just... I, I really hope there's something else to it, because otherwise it's just disappointing what i really want to see now going forward theory wise is that i want to see the um the message that has been left by vegapunk i want that to be what finally makes kizaru like come to his senses and realize that he can't keep following these people whatever the piece of information is that vegapunk leaves whether it's about emu or something like that whatever it is i just hope that it's enough to push kizaru because Kizaru, Kizaru now can't even look Vegapunk in the eye. Like, he can't even look at him when he's talking to him. So we know that there's some emotional bond between the two of them, that Kizaru at least feels bad about what he's being forced to do. 
Uh, well, Saint Tamara as well. Like Saint Tamara was already, um, sorry, um, Cesaro has already begged Saturn, saying, "Do we really need to kill Saint Tamara?" And Saturn's been like, "Yeah, kill everybody. Like no exceptions." So I, I'm hoping that something about that is what's going to push Cesaro to like snap out of it. And the way I would really like to see it work is um, when you look at the Labo face from a distance, it looks like a giant. It, it's like in the silhouette of a light bulb. And obviously, this is meant to be like a Thomas Edison reference you know, to Vegapunk being, you know, a genius scientist, et cetera, et cetera. What I would really like to see is when Kizaru does finally decide to, like, stop listening to Saturn, I want to see, like, a light bulb moment, quite literally a light bulb moment. Hmm. Like, he comes to his senses, like in a cartoon where the light bulb pops above their head. And that what Kizaru does, especially with the five Gorose being there at the moment, is almost like a, like a solar flare style attack. So that everyone that looks at it is blinded. Because even if Lucy and the, the Straw Hats, all of them manage to escape from Egghead, all those battleships are still going to chase after them. Like they're, they're not actually getting away. They, they'd be able to follow in pursuit straight away. So the only way for them to escape and be able to make a full getaway is if no one knows where they're going. Like they don't see them actually escape. And I thought uh, a really interesting way to do that would be to make Kazaru physically turn Egghead into a giant light bulb. And that we can then see Kazaru actually fighting properly for once, manage to hold off the five Gurase, not to win, but to be able to hold them off at least, buying time for everyone to escape. And that when Kazaru does finally die, we can see the light bulb go out, but also the light over Eni's lobby go out. And that the, the theme for that would really be now that now that Fuji Tora has been like not kicked out of the Marines fully, but he's not allowed to come back to a Marine base until he brings back Luffy's head, and that Aokiji's already left, and they were the only like moderately good, decent people at Admiral level in the Marines. So if Kizaru goes and he's killed, realistically, all we've got left is Akainu and Greenbull, and they're both just as sadistic as each other. So there's, there's no true justice left in the Marines at Admiral level if Kizaru dies. And I, I'd like to see it work one of two ways. So the Straw Hat Sentimaru, everyone, they escape on the, on the sunny or on the giant ship. And obviously then we see Sentimaru crying because, you know, he knows that Kizaru's probably going to die. And then we see the light go out, Kizaru crying. But if I was being slightly darker with it, one of the... Um, Devil, so we still haven't seen the devil fruit powers of all of the seraphim. And I was thinking that one of them, if, if I was the Gorosei and I could choose any devil fruit in like um, in Pull Down to give to somebody via green blood, I would have sugar's devil fruit because it's broken as all hell. And it fits perfectly with the Gorosei because they like to erase history. And sugar's fruit literally erases somebody from everyone else's memory. So they're gone. And I thought a really dark way of doing it is that Kizaru gets defeated by the Gurase, and that instead of them killing him, they turn him into a toy. So we can see Sentimaru crying on board the Mer on board the Sunny when they're escaping, and then everyone turn around to him and ask what he's crying for, and he doesn't know. Like he sees the tears dripping down his face, but he mm -hmm. has no idea what he's crying over because he can't remember Kizaru anymore. That's cold. That is cold, man. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's what I thought. I, I, nah. so just, because if, if you're going to choose, if you're going to choose the swim, swim fruit from um, um, what's his name, Senior Pink. Yeah, Senior Pink. Why wouldn't you choose Sugar's Devil Fruit? For the love of God, you've got them both because all of the Do Flamingo pirates were put in Impel Down after Dre after Dress Rosa, so they have access to it. So why wouldn't they use it? Why are you going to choose Senior Pink's Devil Fruit over Sugar's Devil Fruit unless one of the other Seraphim already has it? Yeah, you could you could even make that same argument even with Big Mom and Kaido because there's an interesting uh, theory I've heard that maybe Big Mom survives the volcano by absorbing Kaido's soul and comes out as like a mixture of the two being the final boss in Elbaf. So I I, I, like I don't it. know about that, but like yeah. um I think I think you I think have a very survive. similar I idea. I think they both yeah. definitely survive. Well, I, I agree because also. If they have died, why have we not heard about their devil fruits being reincarnated elsewhere? Right? We well, well, you would have thought Zeus that that would be a why big does, thing. Why does Zeus still exist? We yes. so when um, when Mother Caramel died, um, Big Mom had to recreate um, um, what's his name um, Prometheus in her yes. in their image. Like 
she, yeah. she made new ones to resemble the ones she, she missed. Uh, so yeah. they clearly disappeared when Mother Caramel died. So why is Zeus still around? Why does Zeus still exist? Yeah, that's true. No, I, I think personally that uh, Oda is saving Big Mom as the true antagonist of Elbaf. Uh, because she's already the antagonist of the people of Elbaf, of the giants. Yeah. Literally already yeah, from yeah, her exactly. backstory. You know, mm. that has to, so I, that loop has to be tied up. Yeah. So I, I, I think they'll, what they'll probably do is they'll give her amnesia again. Something like that. Because they've already done that trope already. So they're, they're not like, shy about using it. They've used it twice, I suppose, altogether now. Mm -hmm. So a, a volcano exploding in her face would probably make her lose her memory the same way that um, uh, being headbutt by Queen made her lose, like, regain her memory afterwards. Like, I mean, falling I mean, off a waterfall erased her memory. So why wouldn't a <laughs> volcano exploding in her face? I'm good on that, on the Big Mom stuff, personally. Listen, bro. I'm good on that. It wouldn't be the first time something exploded on her. Right? <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> wow. <Jeez. laughs> but um, as far as the Kazaru and, the, and turning Egghead, Egghead into a light bulb, or even potentially be turned into a toy, um, I, I would enjoy that. We talked a couple episodes ago about Kazaru potentially flipping sides and helping Luffy in his fight versus the Gorosei. If we're trying to yeah. do a metaphor about like how dark it can really get, having them clip Kazaru, who is this last potential beacon of light to help that that could be metaphorically beautiful but i i did like the sense of crying thing with the toy i'm trying to think which seraphim it would be maybe the doflamingo seraphim the tournament like i don't like no, he, he was a puppeteer maybe he turned the people the toys the crocodile thing. one because mm -hmm. yeah. remember look, look, we we know that um, Vegapunk is capable of giving a, a Logia green blood, like, gr making um, green blood from a Logia, but it's really, really expensive. So he hasn't done it yet. He knows mm -hmm. it's theoretically possible, but mm -hmm. hasn't done it. So we know that the Crocodile one can't have a Logia. So uh, of all of them, I think that's the only Logia out of the, out of the Warlord, mm -hmm. isn't it, the Crocodile? So I suppose it could be crop like if you wanted to keep Joe Flamingo's one of having the string string fruit, then crocodile's one at least is open to have another devil fruit in place. Hmm. I don't know, I like it. Yeah. yeah. Uh back to your, your message about the Vegapunk message. I think it's gonna be very similar to what we heard from Whitebeard and Roger. It's gonna be a way to carry on the will of D. And I think it's going to be a way. In my opinion, it's something between the Will of D and Sun God Nika, because I think whatever that message says, it really reminds me of when Dr. Kureha from Drum Island saw Luffy and, and she was like, the Will of D is still alive. And I think once more people see on this broadcast all around the world, I think even more new characters will start spawning in from this and being like, we have a reason to fight the world government now. There's a there's a strong reason. So I think if anything, it's going to be as impactful and as harmonious as what Whitebeard and Gold Roger tried to do with their final speeches. Um, and so I, I I think you're you're right on the money with that. Also, I think it's you brought up an interesting point about Kizaru because I was thinking about back in Sabodi when Kizaru was fighting Rayleigh, and Kizaru wasn't really gassed fighting Rayleigh. You know, and you look at him now and dude is gassed from gear five. And so it kind of makes you th question like the scaling, like is gear five. Yeah, I, I, that's, I think he isn't really gassed. I think he's just putting yeah. it on. I think he, he knows he can't openly go and refuse an order from Saturn. But what he can yes. do is pull his punches. Mm -hmm. Like if he gets knocked down, it's like, yeah, no, I'm totally knocked out. I can't get up now. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll, I'll give me five minutes. Yeah. And I'll get back up again. Honest like that. It, he's just buying time hoping that, because remember, he's, he's an admiral, so he's aware of all the miracles that Thor Hats have pulled off anyway. They've got out of way worse situations than this. So doing it again isn't beyond their ability. It's just something he's trying to buy time for them to do. Yes, yeah. I don't think we see the end of Kizaru, and I don't think we see the end of Big Mom either. I do think Kaido's story is done. He is Wano. He is done. See, uh, so, yeah. so the reason I think Kaido survived is because Kaido wants to see a, like, a future with Nika in it. Like, he doesn't right. even know at the moment that that's what he, that Luffy was Nika. He has no idea. He might think he might be Joy Boy, but remember, um, it wasn't just Joy Boy that um, King told him stories about. It was Nika as well. So Kaido, 
Kaido story, for it to be closed off, needs to see something. He needs to know for certain that Luffy is Joy Boy, that he's Nika, and that he's going to change the world. And I thought well, a good way to do that is that, that the, the, okay, the way I think that he is being taken out of the story at the moment is I think the, we know that Sea Prison Stone is exclusively made on Wano. I think the way it's made is the same way Obsidian is made in the real world, and it comes from volcanoes. Mm. And the, right. the, the magma used from the um, Mount Fuji volcano on Wano is how it's the material used, the base material to making Sea Prison Stone. And that when they get knocked into the lava, it's basically like a, it, it solidified Sea Prison Stone. So you could have them both like trapped from the neck down and be physically trapped inside it so they can't move. Um, now, especially now we're seeing cover stories involve Wano again. What I would really right. love to see is a like a cover panel where Momo and um, Yamato were basically going over and feeding Big Mom and Kaido like rice every day and just like talking. To them. <laughs> <laughs> it would give us because it would be it would be similar to how what Kaido did when Kaido imprisoned Yamato. He yeah. imprisoned Yamato and only gave her a bowl of rice to eat. And that it would be because uh, I don't think Yamato and Kaido's story is done by any stretch. I think there'll be some kind of reconciliation between the two. Maybe not love like father child love or anything, but at least some sense of like I appreciate what you have gone on to do, hmm. and that that would yeah. just be a nice way of doing it. Again, and you could do it in a cover panel and just explain it that way. And then when Blackbeard now inevitably turns up and. Um, goes after Pluton. So he's going to find out about Pluton from, um, from what's his name? Caribou. Caribou, yeah. yeah. Which again, I called one of my other theories that turned out to be right. I, but, um, <laughs> I, I, think, yeah, I think that what's going to happen is Blackbeard's going to go there and Blackbeard is going to use the quake route to physically crack open Wano in order to get to it. He's not going to be patient wow. and like, walk all the way down that the stairs and try and like, mm. you know, find a way to get out. He's going to physically rock up there and just crack all crack the islands open. into pieces yeah. in order to get to it. Mm. Because then it would give us a way for Yamato to actually be introduced to the Straw Hats again and join with the Straw Hats. Mm. Maybe that's how Blackbeard finds Kaido and Big Mom. Because that's another thing. Does Vegapunk's message reach Kaido and Big Mom? Who knows? Yeah, well, again, so, again, so um, it depends on Wait, whether broker, or not broker. the Wano. Broker. Go ahead, go ahead. I gotta cut you there. We gotta take other callers, man. You're giving okay. up I'm too sorry, much I'm game. I'm sorry. 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 i am sorry i and you guys, and you. Right. I'm glad your technical difficulties are solved. If you could do me a favor and be less popular so I can get through, that'd give me a massive favor. <laughs> oh, man. You gotta talk to Marv. He has a mic now, bro. <laughs> I, I heard as well. Honestly, for some reason, I just assumed Marv was a woman. What? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Marv, do you want to respond? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there, there you go. I, I just I assumed four good looking guys on a podcast. You'd have a nice like secretary in the background, etc., like that, answering your phone calls for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not oh, disappointed. I'm not disappointed. I'm just surprised. Oh man. <laughs> All right. Uh, Much love, guys. Take care of yourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank, thank you, you, bro. Thank you're you amazing, too. bro. Mm-hmm. I do agree right. with the uh, Blackbird going to Wano. Oh, no, 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 no. But yeah, thanks for sharing, Broker. Yeah, we're good. Uh, Lex, by the way, I, I um, just found your um, channel and stuff like that, and it, it looks great. Uh, I, I suck at FPS games, but if you want people to give you theories, just let me know. <laughs> um, dude, yeah, no, the, the storyline and, and what I do has long gone from theories. The corporatization has just ruined it, so it's just... <laughs> I, I I was a theory crafter back in the day, but now it's just silence, you know? It's just <laughs> nothing. <laughs> there you go, guys. You know what your future on YouTube is now. <laughs> <laughs> one, you'll be, one day you'll be way too big for theories and anything like that, and it'll be, you know, the TOP podcast sponsored by Verizon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Broker, enjoy the rest of your night, bro. Thank yeah, you right. for staying uh, up, yeah. too. Celtic start Lakers all the way. Hey. <laughs> you know,
<laughs> have right. a good one, bro. Have a good night, guys. Thank you, you too. You too. Peace, bro. All right. Bye. It's so crazy because it's so late over there, but yeah. yeah, yeah, it's like in the wee hours, right? It's like five hours out or something like that. I think so, yeah. Hey, what's going on? This is Larry from that One Piece talk. Who are you and how are you? Ah ha ha. Andrew, what's up, bro? What's up, man? What's going on, Andrew? Yeah, doing good, man. I just gotta say just two things before I get my for my question. Um, it was just wants to just one thing that Lex said. It was like whoever would have partnered with One Piece characters. First of all, Zoro would never play Cod. He'd be just saying a lot of racist and places. <laughs> 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 Legit. He's Legit. like he's like black, but he's like black weight seventy four. I'm coming after you. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible. Oh, man. And just the last, and the last thing, and this last thing is, um, Seb, I got some beef with you from last week. What did I do last and week? Bro, you disrespected my glorious bald king, Krillin. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> bro, oh, one here we go. Disc, here we go. One, di- bro, one destructo disc. Kaido. Ain't no hockey attached to that. Bro, <laughs> just, you just need one, and that's it. You be out, bro. Bro, that bro, that bald head, solar flare. <laughs> <laughs> bro, he's done. He's blind. Oh man. Wow. Now, so for my question today is that, is regarding to villains, do you like when your villains are sympathetic or just straight up villains, as in ruthless, no holds barred, doesn't care, etc. Lex, you want to answer? My favorite villain in One Piece is actually Do Flamingo, and I think I oh. agree that I like more of a variety of emotion uh i felt like i'm a little bit disappointed with kaido not gonna lie because it's like i feel like a lot of what built him up doesn't even really matter in the story because he's the strongest man alive but he's not really the strongest man alive is he right and so it's like right i look back at a character like do flamingo and the difference of world building and character i really like do flamingo because even his final attack against Luffy is very similar to the same attack that Emu used on Lelucia Kingdom. And there's something towards that about the holiness of what Emu believes is holy. And it, it's it's gone down to the same wavelength, down to Doflamingo, even though he got outcasted from being a celestial dragon, right? And so to me, that is more interesting than just, I am the epitome of brute strength, right? And it's like... Right. As much as I love Kaido, I just and and I, again with the backstory just being so simplistic, I think you can only go so far when you have a character based off brute strength. So I do like sympathetic villains. Like one of my favorite villains is Meruem from Hunter x Hunter. He believes that he is the next evolution of humans, right? And so it's like there's a lot of layers to unpack there. Whereas Kaido is just a suicidal strongman. That's mm-hmm. pretty much his basis. So. Ultimately, yes, I do like when they're more sympathetic because it gives them more room to build the character. So that's my answer. Yeah. yeah. So by for, the way, this is just villains in general, not just specifically yeah. One Piece. Just for like, for mm-hmm. me, I think it depends on how they're written, right? So like in One Piece, we have two prime examples of like a, a villain being sympathetic or at least empathetic, where you can empathize with what they're going through or what they, their past was with Doflamingo, and then you have somebody that's equally loved in the community, but we get almost nothing about their backstory with Crocodile. So, like, so yeah, long as they are imposing, so long as they show you that they're great on panel, you're not going to mind too much, r- regardless of which way we go with it, whether they're, they should be fighting for this goal or not. But then, like Lex just said, if you don't hit, if you don't land on that sympathy like we did with Kaido... None of that landed for people, right? Like, oh, he wants these things. He wants to, to have this great passing. He, he's done all these evil things. And then we got the build up as if there was going to be some, like, extremely nuanced or amazing metaphor or story to be gained from that. And there just wasn't. It lands flatter. So mm-hmm. I don't really mind. Like, I, Doflamingo's probably my favorite character. So I guess I lean more into the sympathy, I guess. I don't really sympathize with Doflamingo. I just understood what he was doing and why. But in general, it doesn't matter whether it's sympathetic or not if you're not written well. <laughs> At the end of the day, yeah. it's just how it's going to be. So I think Kaido yeah. is a perfect example of what not to do with your villain. 
Well, I, I you think Kaido was things. designed. Yeah. yeah, Kaido was designed to be like that. He's designed to be non-relatable because the only person theoretically that would relate to him is someone who lives just like him, who believes the epitome of everything is strength. And I just who lives like that in 2024? <laughs> I mean, unless you're like a bodybuilder, you know. So yeah. I I think it, it is intentional, but you're absolutely right. It it, it destroys what could have been. And I, I don't know. I, I don't know how you solve a problem like Kaido because he's just designed to be the epitome of strength, literally. Yeah. Law? No, I agree 100% with Lex and uh, Sebastian because even with Kaido, and I feel like we're all just attacking on Kaido. But for example, it's like, <laughs> all right, what build up to you even viewing that way? We know, all right, you were kind of like a more monger growing up. Like you just fought in battles for your kingdom and that's all you did. But. That wouldn't equate to you viewing the world the way you do now and treating Wano the way it is, you know? And then you join the, um, you know, the Rocks Pirates. But again, how would this develop you into being what you were? We didn't get any of that. It just seemed like, all right, you just, you just, someone who's like, sadistically loves to fight and hurt people, and that's what you just grew up to be. And you just continue that all your life. Yeah. And you kind of wanted to pass by someone similar to you or someone that was going to change the world to your level. So it's like it didn't really add up to like Kaido what we saw from him, and that's what's missing. With a sympathy yeah. with people, you kind of want to see what built them to this person, like the Flamingo. We saw what made it. Even though I dis- I don't like the Flamingo as a character because if you're too overly evil, evil, I'm not gonna relate with you. I'm just not gonna like you. I'm gonna I want am. you to lose. Right. You know. Right. But if you have some reasons why your drive is that way, or I could kind of mm-hmm. understand it. The Flamingo, I can't fully understand it because again, girls say they're just evil in general. To me, it's just like. All what Doflamingo went through, it just amplified even more to his drive to be even more evil than he already was. You know, that's why I saw for Doflamingo. That's mm-hmm. why I don't like him. But when people have, like, a not really a just cause, but, like, a reason where, like, the way they understood life and what they went through and other things went through, it's like, this is their best option to go through. I'm going to carry it out this way, you know? So that's where the villain, the villain where I would not really relate to, but I would see more. It's like, all right, you don't necessarily view yourself as the bad guy. You're the way I'm going to change the world through my way because this is what I believe is best, so to speak. You know, because, like, in a way, pirates are technically viewed as themselves as bad guys, like Luffy. But mm-hmm. he knows, all right, the world needs something different, you know? from right. Even though it's more simply with Luffy, but that's, so to speak, if Luffy's kind of viewed as the bad guy through the world's eyes because he's a pirate, even though we know he's not the bad guy, right? That's a different way of viewing it. The world needs to change, and I'm going to do it through what I see the world should be that way. But most... One Piece villains are kind of simple in that way. We just get the evilness, you know? Yeah. They are they justify the reason of being evil because on top of being more evil, you know? We don't really get where you're like, you know what, he's actually, I'm rooting for him because I see his reasoning on the world is crazy and stuff like that. We don't get that in One Piece. It's just like, I like doing this because I want to do things my way. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oda likes his villains right. to be villains. Right. For real. Yeah. Right. I, I just like two type of villains. I'm going to keep it a buck. I like the ones that are the heroes of their own story. Mm. And I like the ones that pose a question and put it onto others yes. and see their uh, yeah. reactions afterwards. We got Magneto in Marvel, mm-hmm. hero of his own story, uh, much like Dofi. And then we have the Joker, who poses a question to you and says, what would you do if you had one bad day? That's right. it, bro. I go either way. I don't need a villain hey. with backstory. Oh, oh, you do? Pause. <laughs> yeah. <It's so> <laughs> You, you remember that one time I said I want to live vicariously? Yo, that was a <laughs> But I meant to say vicariously. Yeah. That was so pause. No, nah, but Joker. Hey, we know what you mean. Yeah, uh, the Joker's perfect for me, bro. I, I, I think Emu will pose a question. I think that. I hope so. I, mean, I hope. I would hope, yeah. Honestly. The, the character already is posing a question because it's what made you so special from this ancient kingdom? What is it that. Why did you scatter the Poneglyphs? Like, what is. It's not it's not a big moral question yet, but there's already something brewing there. And I think Oda is doing that. It would make sense to do that for the ultimate villain of the story. Like, well, yes, I agree, Blackbeard is the ultimate villain because he's the complete foil of Luffy. I still think Emu has the biggest relevance within the world building of the show right now. And I think that is the villain Oda's gonna use to pose the question with Emu. Yeah, that's that's really what I believe. Let's hope, Andrew. What about you, bro? Before you go. Yeah, for for me, it always just kind of depends, like how you said, with the way that the character is being written. 
because something for me I learned when I was just taking just writing courses is where it's don't make your character like relatable or don't make them one note. It's make them interesting, make them complex. So for me, I, I just depends. It really just kind of depends, honestly, because I don't like when people use sympathetic backstories as a way to just just only justify a character sometimes. Like, hey, I just like about to commit genocide, but hey, it's because my mom died. Like, I agree. I agree one hundred percent. I agree. Man, it's so lazy, dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like, but I do also like me when villains are just straight up villains. Like, I think I'll bring, I'll make a good point. Like King Piccolo from the original Dragon Ball series, he's just a straight up prick. Like he just he beat some of the, the beat his minions and himself. He defeated multiple people in the series. Took down like took down the original Dragon Ball. Oh, sorry, spoil. Uh, what's his name? The original the Shenron. That's his name. Sorry, yeah. it's been a while. And then like when he's fighting Goku, he's pushed to his absolute limit. And that one moment he and he just and Goku finds a way to beat him. That's how you make an effective effective villain. That maybe some would say is considered just evil for the sake of evil, but that's how it. But that's still to be a really effective. So again, it just depends sometimes. Yeah. 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 But Andrew, yo, it's oh, good oh, to wait. hear from you, bro. I just, I, I just want to say just one thing. Oh, yeah. Kira Kira. What's up? Okay, uh, okay, of course, like, rest in peace, Akira Toriyama. Because I just wanted to say, like, a favorite memory I had just regarding his work. Yeah. So when there was when there was a, one of the Dragon Ball movies, Resurrection F, this was at a good point in my life. I was I just finished, I just finished summer school. I was about to go into 11th grade. And I went to go see that movie. And that crowd was actually absolutely electric. Every moment, people were excited for every day. It was literally so loud that the, some of the people were, you can hear from outside the movie theater. Mm. The Dragon Ball Z and, Brawly movie? Uh, no, the Resurrection F, so it's Frieza. Resurre- Resurre- oh, F. Frieza. Yeah, and then when they're out, we were like, they say, like, hey, join up. We're going to do like this, uh, like a state, Super Saiyan scream. We're just going to start yelling. <laughs> yeah. no, That's great. I, dude, I was, I was literally that kid that, like, the black, you ever seen that video of like the black kid going Super Saiyan? Yeah. 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 Yo, that was literally me. And I'm just like, just peeing off. Damn. And I'm just like, man, I, it was such, it, those are like one of those good memories I always have. And it, I had to contribute that to Akira Toriyama. And it was always be part of my life. Also, Budokai Tenkaichi three, I always main Kid Boo. <laughs> <laughs> that's my. That's like, I right, so, but that's all I want to say. Just rest in peace to the goat. Yeah, um, man, rest in peace yeah. to Akira, bro. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Andrew. I appreciate you, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. Also, Emu Gang. Oh my God! You gotta stop, bro. You gotta <laughs> stop, bro. Yo, you gang, stop, bro. We growing, we growing. But hey, we growing to yeah. All right, see you. All, All right, enjoy day. the rest of your night, bro. Have a good night. All right. Bye. Yeah, guys, that's gonna be it for the calls. I want to save some time for Lex to speak, and then also for these last couple super chats that we're gonna speed run through. Do we have? A, any? We only have one. Oh, so. we only have one. Yeah. All right. What is it? Uh, two from NSF Hammer. It says, hashtag Zoro is doo-doo. Hashtag Seb got great takes. Larry, the man. Um, I, I will never understand how much Zoro hate we got today. Oh, it's Lex's fault. <laughs> it's it's it, Lex's fault. It he started it out, bro. But like, He put the energy out you, there. You made people feel uh, comfortable I admitting to hating Zoro. if I got his earrings done. Nah, I bro. cannot be a hater. Look, I'm know? a Batman hater. This is the bat phone. <laughs> you feel me? I think it's really coming from the most recent. Him, they expected him to walk through Rob it, Lucci. It has been three months. Yeah, it's, been, <laughs> it's been three months. Since, been, he, I think it's since six he started months. fighting Rob, I think it's six months. Since he started fighting Rob, yeah, I think it's six nah, months. That's... Y'all are so serious? Oh, because you're including the breaks. Yeah, it's time, man. That it's sounds. A lot of time. That sounds crazy. A lot of time though. fighting big cat. He ain't no big cat. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah so we have a couple mo- minutes left guys if you haven't subscribed to lex please subscribe to him right now uh if you want to go watch him on uh you know twitch <laughs> as well he does stream uh daily i've streamed in three weeks so i will stream one of these days probably tomorrow. yeah <laughs> uh but either way lex you know you've had your time uh on the pod uh did you did you have fun bro like oh dude i i can't speak about what i think he's <laughs> gonna do in one piece to anyone without them looking at me like i'm a crack at it <laughs> like, come on like, that's, that's it that's i mean dude i 
I if anybody is watching this that doesn't even know about One Piece, please, please get into it. This is I've had so many friends that are like, oh yeah, 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 I'll get into it, I'll get into it. And then they look at the chapter count or the episode count and they're like, nah. <laughs> and, like, and then I'll tell them and they'll look at me like I'm crazy and I'll say, it's not long enough. It's not long enough. <laughs> it's not long it long legitimately long. is it. You want it to keep going. You yeah, want you to know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not long enough. Lex, you gotta do trades. You gotta trade <laughs> whatever they love or like for, for one piece. Yeah. And then They'll be hooked, and you'll probably drop whatever they. That's, <laughs> you'll That's probably true. Drop. That's yeah, how you manipulate. Will... That's how you manipulate people. Yeah. That's what I do. Yeah, I did that <laughs> once with a friend, and I think he wanted me to watch Sao season three, and I was just like, "Wow, I gotta save you." I gotta, <laughs> save you. <laughs> 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 gotta save this man right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lex, if you're not, uh, you should go into our Discord, bro. Yeah. Cause we we yeah, yeah we be in there uh, we be talking One Piece people there's like a whole like section of spoilers that come out or like uh, if you just want to talk about one specific thing as well they yeah, do no, like the forums right you guys yeah there's like forums on there Dude, there's so much you can do and to your point man you you said you don't have a lot of community as far as engagement with other people regarding One Piece yeah this community is gonna love you our Discord one they'll love you they love your takes. They'll come for you on a day-to-day -day basis, but it's, My so, haters. it's Let's so go, much fun in there, man. We get yeah. to engage with people with so many different thought processes and takes and different viewpoints on the series. Yeah, It's a lot. It's a lot of fun. So I'd definitely say tap in. Yeah, I would yeah, definitely no, say send, send me that invite link. I'm, I'm yeah, totally down. To but ignore Nick Cuevo. Whatever he says, like, don't <laughs> don't listen to that. That's the that's the uh, the the super fan of yours. <laughs> yeah. So, no, no, no. I'm I'm never gonna I'm never gonna ignore you, bro. That's. <laughs> I was gonna invite uh, him I'm, on. I'm I was gonna be like, Yo, Nick, come through real quick so you could say hi. And he's like, Nah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's so funny because like I'll stream and there are actually a lot of COD fans that do know One Piece, but I'll stream and talk about it, and then somebody in my chat will be like, Shut. Shut up already! <laughs> no, what are you talking about? I'm just like, oh man, <laughs> that's yeah. so toxic. Yeah, no, it, it's hilarious. I just laugh. That's that's so funny. Yeah, but, yeah. But... No, I'll definitely join the Discord because I uh, I got one friend, and basically our our DMs on Twitter is just One Piece manga panels back and forth. <laughs> really? right? like, that's so that's, funny. Yeah, that's that's crazy. pretty much it, bro. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh but yeah is there is there anything else you got coming out soon or anything you want to tell everybody to possibly tap into like uh any future things yeah um it's funny because like i miss such a vibrant community because like with cod right now uh it's like literally imagine this is what is happening with cod but i'll describe it in one piece imagine if oda sold one piece to a company and allowed corporate suits basically to just run one piece it would just oh my goodness it would be terrible that's yeah. what's happening to cod right now pretty mm -hmm. much and so um i've taken the liberty with a couple people who do like custom maps on bo3 and we've decided to remake a 10 year old map that call of duty refuses to remake after so long uh, and the map is called die rise it's basically just like a zombies map in uh, like these skyscrapers that have fallen apart uh -huh. and we've I've worked with a couple developers and we've decided to bring it to the community for free and so we don't have an official release date but sometime this year in Q2 maybe even Q3 we would love to release it to you guys for free and if you if you played old COD zombies back in the day with like Black Ops 2 you'll love it man you'll love it so definitely check that out but other than that I'm just working. I have like that Fortnite project I was telling y'all about and just pretty much just hoping COD even sticks around in five years. I think it's that bad. Like legit it is. It's not good out here in the, in the COD gaming scene, but gaming is doing well right now. Gaming is yeah, outside of COD. Well. Gaming is thriving. It's, it is, it's, it's pretty it's weird. Well. Uh, fighting games are like really good right now. Yeah. 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 A lot yeah. of games, single player games are coming back. Um, PVE games are coming back with player versus versus environment where you're fighting like AI and stuff like with hell divers mm. um, Man a lot of games are coming out. It's just cod is dropping the ball <laughs> <laughs> They're dropping that ball uh, But yeah, man, I'm super excited for people uh, To to check it out, but I mean you'll get it for free, man. I'm, I'm not gonna charge nothing <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, man, it's yeah. been a pleasure hosting you. Um, I definitely had a great time uh, talking with you. I know we talked a little bit through the the Twitter, and you know, yes, yeah. um, it was just uh, it's great vibes, man. I really appreciate you coming and being on the show for sure. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry for sending you that reaction image of me. I was like, do you want like a thumbnail <laughs> image of me? And I gave you like the most like PNG. No, thumbnail. you're good. You're good. <laughs> you know what it is? I've started to notice that. Uh, not many people like take pictures of themselves mm -hmm. oh yeah, yeah you know what i'm saying yeah. it's usually like pictures of us going somewhere or doing something you know right yeah yeah right. so believe me it was fine it, Dude, get get yeah. some professional headshots taken don't let larry Dude. skate it go man <laughs> yeah no get some work I, I, I need to i i honestly i need to because it's like i um I had a lot of pictures taken of me when I was with my ex, but like wow. now that we're, it's over, it's just like, yeah, I don't want to take photos. Listen, of bro, there's, there's AI now, bro. It could easily swap her out. Just, just with crop the, her out. Yeah, no, it could be what yo, it'd probably be with like a baddie, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like a fake chick. She looks mad put, put, good. Put, put me next to Nami, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But. Uh, yeah, man. Thank you so much to to everybody that super chatted today, to everybody that's working, to everybody that's living a little harder than others, and to everybody that just continuously loves to support us. Thank you for coming by. Thank you for loving Lex and supporting him too. And it's been a real blessing to just do another one of these episodes because every time the number goes up, it's kind of still unbelievable that the number is still going up. Uh -huh. So while we're here thank you thank you thank you and with that being said my name is larry lawrence Sam. lino and lex have a good night Jana. <laughs>